Asia. <laughs> <laughs> I just see the red squiggly line. Like, let me know when it pop up on your end. I haven't gotten a notification. Oh, there you go. Let me put my phone on mute. And remind me to record. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna put a sticky note up here. Lou, are you able to like like your physical? Can you I like to use video iPhone? All right. Can I turn around? Can I turn around? Can I turn around? Can I Hi, everyone that's watching. We are waiting on a couple people. Um, have y'all seen the topics? Like today is the last day of like Black history. So I was trying to like incorporate. Can you hear? Who on this iPhone then? Let me let me remove this this one. Let me. You hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Did All you right, want to? There we go. Okay, okay. Wait a minute. Hold up. So who on this iPhone? Hold on, I got to remove one of them because <laughs> I got two. I, can you see it, Courtney? Yeah, I see it. Okay, let me kiss this you at you. <laughs> Oh, that's oh, okay. Okay, because I thought you like who infiltrated security. I was gonna say I don't think Keisha got an iPhone. <laughs> I, I think I'm not sure, but okay. So we're waiting on two people. So right now we just uh, what they call it, shooting the shit or whatever. Uh, hey, introduce. Hey, hey, Sharon. Look, you finally look. I think it's like your second time catching the live. Finally. I think I got like a good 30, 45 minutes for y'all though. Because I, okay, I have a job to do in the morning. Okay. All right. We're going to give them like five minutes. All right. You, can you reread the topics again? I have it in my phone, but I want to, you know. Yeah, um, and I'm, I can send them to you as well. But when, it, when this this how I do it, like whenever we talk about it, I like restate it or whatnot. Already, already, yeah. So, um, and then also it usually be like different. It's usually like four. It started out with three of us, then it's like four, and I was like five or whatever. And then so right. kind of you kind of get lost into what the question was after everybody give their like opinion and stuff, you know? Yeah. Um. But yeah. Yeah, let me shoot it. I was say, you just shoot it to my email if you want to. Yeah, I'm back to it. All right. Appreciate it. No problem. I'll show you guys. Hey. <laughs> okay, do your, your email or your inbox, like your Facebook inbox. I'll send you my email right quick. Okay, send it to me on via the inbox. All right, I can do it. I'm so disappointed in everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't say it. I, I didn't say it. Courtney said it. I know. said it. We all scared. Huh? Why? Because we all scared? Uh, I guess because of like the last minute, um, you know. The podcast or what? I like why why are you dis why are you disappointed? Because this ain't last minute. We knew about this last Sunday. <laughs> Talk to him. Talk to Every him. Sunday. Every Sunday, like a preacher. Every Sunday. When you go to church, you can show up for the podcast. Hey, it's y'all, it's y'all crew though. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we ain't talking about you. We ain't talking about you. Oh, like, so you I just you, had a little look, technical issues. Look, you know? you're, you're a special guest. We expect I, you to uh to come in come like later. 
like hair, makeup, like do you got skill? You know, like you know how people celebrities be or whatever they be like. Uh, we told you no, no red M and M's, and I see red M and M's in the bowl. You know, hey Shamika, hey Jay. Y'all say hi to us. Let us know you're here. Yeah. Okay. So two, two more minutes. Daniel's sitting here watching. He could be on here. Daniel, you come up here. Anyway. I gotta talk to D. Yeah, I'm talking smack, Daniel. Get, get Daniel, it. You, you can come up here. You can just don't go live. Just just have your picture up here. Just have pork chop up here. That's it. Because we you know we need, you know how you balance out. Like you're like the the good guy. Like women don't meet guys like you. So you're, you know, you're a rare good breed. Guy. Either either you full of shit or you a rare breed. What up? <laughs> you know that, that's how you feel, ain't it? No, I'm just saying. I, I, look, I'm I'm not speaking right now when I'm on the platform right now. I'm not speaking. I know. I don't feel no I'm, speaking, I'm speaking from, you know. Yeah, experience. <laughs> Ashley, you look so good. Honey, I told you I don't do that. I don't. I, don't, I mean, I, I know you don't. I'm telling you. I, I appreciate the compliment, but I don't get. You know, I ain't no veterinarian. I don't do all that. You know. Shut up, Ashley. <laughs> But I appreciate it. Gotta raise dogs, man. <laughs> but you do. Hold up, so, hold up. So, Lou, did you feel some type of way? When, well, not feel some type of way, but did you, when I said either he's full of shit or a good guy? Nah, neither one. Because that's, I mean, that's your mouth. I mean, that's, I mean, I don't care. That's not me. I know who I am, you know? So I can't speak for the next man. We two different people, you know? So I don't be worrying about stuff Thank like you. that. Thank you. Bring that ass. Come on, yeah. come on, nothing. come on up here. I'll allow that's you in, me. but but I, I understand what you're saying. Um, by that, by um, that's my opinion. Right. Does, just because of what that's I say does not reflect on you as a black man, you know. I don't care about that. I know who I am, you know. So, absolutely, yeah. And we shouldn't bring past situations with other black nah. men to you. Nah. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I don't care about it. That's that's ignorant. I mean, that's like you know, that's your business, you know. So that that's between y'all. That's not the podcast. That's not the that's not the topic, you know. Absolutely. Okay, so yeah. I sent the email. I don't know which one I sent it from. I got a lot. Of you good? You good? I found it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it'd be the first one up there. Appreciate it. Okay, we waiting on we we for sure. Well, I ain't gonna. I let that. Whitney. Whitney is making our appointment. Uh, don't be jealous. I mean, don't be uh, shy on the camera now. Come on. Now. Let me see y'all, y'all. What? I don't know. Can you up there yet? I don't know where it is. Top is. All right, one more minute, and then we're going to have to start. They'll just jump in when they can jump in. That's a long three minutes, but all right. Well, let's just go ahead and get started then. All right. Go on, let's, let's go get to it. And you is you are you coming or no? Like comment why or in. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the um topic and then um Daniel, you can when you come in here, then I'll just redo the question and um you know. All right, so hey everybody, I'm Ashley Monique, uh owner of Ashley's Jimmy Tummy and the creator of the I've Noticed podcast. Um make sure you go like all the pages, uh the business pages. You can order sauces from my website, the Ashley's Jimmy Tummy website. You can uh, follow where I'll be posted and located at uh, when I get my food truck situated uh, on the Ashley Jimmy Tummy Catering Facebook page. You can also be up to date with the latest episodes. All right, if you can't catch the episode live, you can watch it from the YouTube page, Ashley Jimmy Tummy. And also make sure you like the I've Noticed Facebook page. Uh, we have a special guest here. And can you introduce yourself and the type of services that you provide and where can they find you at to book you for your service? Peace, family, hey, I was everyone. 
Um, I am Lou Clemens, the owner and the CEO of Body Movement Specials, or you'll probably see Movement Specials on U-Haul. So you can either book me. I look, I offer services for you know loading or unloading houses or residential. I mean, just residential services, not commercial yet, but um. We offer the load and unload it, so you know, to and from. And uh, we also offer, you know, the packing and unpacking, same thing. Uh, besides that, uh, we didn't open the cleaning business yet, so we just patiently wait. So, but that's 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 a service that will be offered in the future. Is this? It's coming. Look at it's it. Coming. It's coming. But uh, yeah, more things coming soon, and you know, junk remover as well. We could do that as well. So that's in the, that's here. So I'm gonna get some, you know, new postcards made for that. But the other services I offer is uh, fitness. You know, um, besides fitness is wellness. So you know, I offer meal plans. I offer uh, you know workout plans. They'll be you know week. You know, weekly prices are affordable. You know, lowest twelve ninety nine. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, meal plans, you have like multiple meal plans. So, you know, starting as low as twelve ninety nine. So that'll be coming on a you know the rise soon. I give it about nine days, you know what I'm saying? And then I release everything. But uh besides that with the wellness part, uh I teach you how to nurture your body from head to toe. Like I myself went on an alkaline diet and uh I lost some weight on it. You know, I stopped eating meat uh for three months now, it was real. But <laughs> that's why I was be asking about vegan food. I just, come on now. So, you know, sooner or later I'll be off that's the why services. We need Whitney up here. Whitney is a oh she said she's coming. Whitney also does uh vegan as well. I don't know how far along she is in her journey. She's pescatarian, like me. <laughs> okay, Whitney oh, is it's a, it's a difference. It's a difference, y'all. So it's plant-based. And then people like say vegetarian, it's a difference because they, you know, you can eat the plant-based food and then a vegetarian diet could be different. But the alkaline diet, only like only thing you eat is like fruit and veggies. So, you know, your body is like 60% well, 60 of like water, you know, a baby's on 75%. And it's like a person that's over like 50, their body percent of water, they, they supposed to intake is like 50%. So... I went on like an alkaline diet, you know, our body is electricity if the, you know, it requires all that water to come in it. So, you know, if you touch a socket, we get shocked, you know, so our body is electricity. So if you're not putting that electricity in your food, you know, you're not going to get the proper energy, you know, food equals like mood, you know what I'm saying? So what you intake, you might feel sleepy at the end of the day, or if you just eat the fruit, which will burn off with your, you know, the natural fruits, uh, with the seeds in it. So you have to make sure you find seeded fruit because they are different now, you know what I'm saying? So, How long have you just, been on your journey, your path? Uh, like I said, I'm coming in like four months now. So okay. I changed everything like four months ago and I have a new plan on the way. So I'm about to buck back up with some weight on and I have like the meal plans and stuff going with it as well. Hey Whitney. And that's, most of the services I offer, you know, everything will be weekly and monthly prices and uh, consultation. Like, if you need to talk, we do 30 minutes, you know, and I'll give you prices for that. So any information you need about nutrition, wellness, fitness, you know, moving, just contact me, you know. All right. So um, I have tagged him on the post. So y'all make sure y'all, if y'all not already following him, you if you're not already his Facebook friend, then and make on. sure you click on it. All right, Luke. You got me? You got my IG? No, no. Everything Tell me your IG. Specials. And my new and website, I'm... my business page will be coming up soon on Facebook, two of them. So it'll separate the fitness and the uh, movement services. Right. All right. Daniel, hi, Whitney. Oh, my God. Oh, my. I need, you know what? I got to get the drum roll <laughs> shit. I got to get the drum roll because guess who is coming in, you guys? Guess who's coming in? Coming in. It better be Sister Moody. Kiki. Look at God. All right. So uh, every okay, uh, so let's let's go ahead and get started because uh as you know, 
Mr. Lou is a busy black man. All right. I am. Successful. <laughs> successful. Okay, so let's jump into this first topic, uh, which is do and today let's acknowledge that this is February was Black History Month, and today is the last day of Black History. So I want to like I thought it was very important for him because I do I am his Facebook friend and I do see like his um his entrepreneurial hustle and I respect it. All right, so are we actually supporting black businesses or are we just like sharing their pages and using hashtags? You know, um, what are we doing? Like, how do we feel about this, this black business? I know we'd be like, remember uh, Kiki and Keisha, remember when we used to go to like a restaurant? We was like, oh, we're going to go to black restaurants, you know, support black restaurants when we used to go out and eat. But then it was like real cut, cut real short. And it was like, fuck it, we're going to Olive Garden. We're going to Red Lobster. Because <laughs> it wasn't that much. So how do you feel about supporting Black businesses? Um, Lou, how do you feel about it? And uh, you are a Black business, but how do you feel about it? How, how important is it? It's very important. You know, it's a must. We support each other and reunite. You know what I'm saying? So it's something we got to part, you know, depart it from. So it's a must. We just support each other and, you know, quit all that. Still talking, you know, just, just come straight for it. Like, if you have a problem, just come straight for it, me, you know? So it just like that, you know, stop back, backlashing people. Just keep it 100. I mean... So I, think, I think what you're trying to say is, like, when you have an issue with the services that you provide, don't just, like, blast yeah, it. Yeah, come yeah. to you more behind the scenes so you can fix it. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll keep it like it. that. If you can't perform a job like Lou Clemens can, then it's just not capable for you, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's a whole new plan coming. I'll be hiring soon. So if y'all can share that, I appreciate that. Oh, for and, sure. Uh, yeah, just we'll get it going. Team. You know, we got to keep the marathon team. You know, it must keep the team. You know what I'm talking about? So, yeah, you know, I used to support you, but I can't eat that food. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, listen, listen. Okay, well, since you said you, you, you talked about the services that you currently do now, and then you also touched bases on what's, what's coming in the future. So... Publicly, I'm going to say uh, my first food truck, I'm not just going to switch up. I can't switch up like that because I have a following. Oh, no, 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 no. You, know? you so, can take your time. Take your time. Right. So what I plan on, uh, hopefully for my birthday, because I bought, I, I made a big purchase for my birthday, uh, my 35th birthday this year, and um, which is a food When is your birthday? Uh, November the 16th. Uh, okay. You know, yeah, mine so. is the 14th, right? I mean, I'm not worrying about you. We talk to the queen. You know what I'm, I'm talking about? I'm just saying. You know, man, I'm <laughs> Scorpio life. We talking to the queen, man. So, I, you know, I invested in myself. I'm real big on investing in myself. So, um, so hopefully, so basically, the point of this is, uh, I want to go vegan. I want to do my second food truck would be vegan, uh, by November. 16 2021 that's my goal you know do vegan so do, up until now i'm gonna start doing research and stuff so i, I most definitely move whitney i'll probably be reaching out to y'all because i know what I you, have, get, you know i got you, got you. yeah like i, right I need now. to <laughs> right. but i'm waiting right. on you though wait yeah you. yeah 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 i know I, i'm gonna have i gotta i like to have my shit together before i come to people you know i, don't, I, don't, I, got you I know though. you're a busy why, person why, yeah, and i don't want to waste nobody's time because i don't have time to waste either so when i'm like you know because i need to do some recipes like switch up i want to hire like vegan chefs and stuff like you know but already yeah, it's very to. important so how do y'all feel about it let's um and let's remember uh you know let's kind of courtney how do you feel about it um do you actually support black businesses or are you just one of those people that just share it online do the hashtag and keep it moving um i i do well you know i'm supporting you girl <laughs> i'm going broke ordering from you but um What's it called? I support black businesses. I'm actually, I'm do, going on a trip in May and I'm actually looking for like um, black owned places that like the clothes that I want and stuff like that, the clothes, type of clothes I'm into, I'm looking for, but I'm not the type to share all the time. Um, well, I'm not the type to share a lot of stuff, period, but like I'm not the type to share or, you know, spread the word or anything else like that. So I guess it's kind of where I'm at fault with that, but I, I believe I do support black businesses and stuff like that. Yeah, I think you do it personally. Of course, not like internet wise, you don't like share it like that, but you're more like behind the scenes of saying, oh, you know what? Like you're like that. You're like the word of mouth uh promoter, pretty much. Right. Um, um Kiki, what about you? As you know, I done supported you throughout all your businesses. Right. 
Don't do me like that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm finding myself. Oh, I'm, mm -mm, I'm, mm -mm. I, I'm right, listen, I'm 35. I'm retiring in five years. I'm letting you know. You, you, you know, I keep talking about it because it's going to happen. I'm retiring. That's all right. Daniel they, they said all 17. No, Daniel, all 20. Okay. <laughs> Hot days, cold days, wet days, <laughs> all of it. But um, I do believe in support and well i'm a big fan of support and um if i if, if it don't get me in trouble legit black legit uh legit black businesses and when i say legit it doesn't mean that everybody you know like being illegal or anything like that just um you have some people or you have some that's out there i i kind of feel like they open like too too soon until they're they they're you know before the capacity they, Right, or yeah. or either they they did it before they actually perfected what they needed to perfect to make it. But I'm all down for supporting black businesses. Um, is I mean to me that's a it's a great thing because, like you said, we we cut it short. We went to Olive Garden. Yeah. We go um, over here. We go eat there. We go stay here. We go do all this for them. And um, my biggest thing will get me, though, is when they come to the black people and be like, oh, let me get the hookup. Yeah. Yeah. Like that that right there bothers me because three all, three ethnicity, three different ethnicities have the same price of one item. And when they get to the black person, let me get a hookup. Yeah. But they don't do that to the other ones. That that bothers me a whole lot. I feel, a whole lot. I feel like if you're going to Support them, support them just like you would the next person or the next Absolutely. ethnicity. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm big on it. So I share, I hashtag, I do all that stuff, but I'm big on supporting le legitimate ones, those that I know, you know, doing right, making right, not trying to cheat people. Um, right, I was just gonna say to counter that a lot of a lot of um, not like business black businesses that don't have like good products or good services or stuff like that expect yeah. support just because they are black business you know what i mean right. like that's their sole thing right um, but i like how you said like you support like the legit ones and stuff like that and you know yeah so i think i think I like, the same way yeah they're, they're basically to uh emphasize on what uh kiki talking about uh the support is there we want to see our people succeed it's just like if you're not ready yet if you don't have if you're not properly staffed you don't have the stuff on the menu or you don't have all the services like together like you don't you can't do it then don't do it like not saying put it on the back burner but just postpone the opening postpone you know until you can get adequate services or at that what you need uh because you want positive reviews because you already know um uh, Charlemagne says this a lot. He says, uh, you know, the lie is more entertaining than the truth. So if uh, you are selling chicken wings and somebody, you got 10 flavors and because somebody is a diehard honey mustard fan and you don't have honey, you got all the other nine flavors, but the honey mustard, you just ran out. It was a line. They saw it was a line when you pulled up. They will go out and be like, you know what? Uh, they they just do some BS pretty much, you know. Mm -hmm. And what pisses right, what pisses me nothing. off, what pisses me off is like people that um uh, that that come to you with bad intentions. You know, they have you have spies that come in with bad intentions because they homegirl or they cousin or they friend. Let's just use me transparency. Like they they people cook as well. Like I had someone that was online um saying some something negative about me that I called B heck on somebody. I'm like, why the fuck would I call? I'm the trap queen when it comes to food. Like, I, I serve, like, anywhere. Like, I'm from the hood. I'm from the projects. You know, like, I will put up a tent, do a pop-up anywhere. Like, why would I call d -Hack? That's the police. Like, we don't supposed to, we don't snitch. Like, d in the food industry is the police. I ain't snitching on nobody. Get your money, okay? <laughs> you know, but that, it pissed me off when I saw that because what happened is when I, pre-COVID, I used to go viral a lot with my foods and stuff. And so it went viral and I saw where somebody shared it. And I saw where one of my Facebook friends was like, yeah, uh, she, this the girl that, that uh, told on blah, blah, blah. I'm like, where the fuck would I tell on her? Like, I make a lot of money, honey. Like, I'm not worried about you selling out your house. I make thousands of dollars in hours. 
And I don't be, I don't, I don't want to go that route, but I could go that route, but I try not to do that. But you have people that just try to sabotage you with black businesses and stuff. Like you'll give the white, the Caucasian workers or employees or whoever businesses, you get them chance after chance after chance after chance. You like olive, you can come out with a piece of hair in your, your soup at Olive Garden or your salad at Olive Garden, which I love their salad, by the way. But uh, but yeah, you'll come to me and you find a piece of red hair. You know what? I can't do it. I can't do it. And one girl, I'm letting you know now publicly, I remember shit. And I'm a Scorpio. I ain't that forgiving like that. You know, God's keeps it, God's still working on me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that right to refuse services to the best of my ability. So I'm keeping a handbook, a picture of when I see y'all do like little bullshit comments and stuff. And when you come oh to my gosh, future, Ashley. Oh, yeah, oh, okay, <laughs> listen, God is still working on me, you know. <laughs> I don't because one bit. What, something pissed me off real bad uh within the last two weeks because somebody did something they, they told a lie on me and then i found out i'm like she's so concerned she blessed and stuff on the internet she ain't got custody of her kids but that's another topic but anyway and i'm ready for oh you. my gosh hey but it, keep yeah. it by hey hey stay on so our anywho top. so we're gonna stay move on, on from that hey, so medis- we, hey man, wait, hold on we moving on how do you feel about black businesses you support them, uh, like just visiting them, or do you actually like share? I I know y'all do, but you know I have to ask it because of you know. But how do you feel about? Yeah, that? yeah. But when it comes, can y'all hear me clearly? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So um, when it comes to black businesses, there's always levels to the support. Like I've seen um, something shared on social media, and I was trying to go back and find the picture that was shared but pretty much it was just saying it's levels to support in businesses and um to your question when you ask are you supporting black businesses or are you just sharing in hashtags i feel like that's low level but that's still a point of support because right. you may have services or products that i don't necessarily need or i don't have really can't promote that to my friends or my family that may want that product or, or want that service. So, you know, even though you people share on Facebook or they, sh- you know, whatever they do on social media to get the name of your business. You know, actually mm-hmm. buying the products and somebody selling shirts and somebody has some kind of tax, tax preparation business or something like that and you're actually taking your money and buying products or buying whatever service, that's another level of support. So I feel like I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, somebody, you know, if it's, you got a certain group of people or a certain person that's only sharing or only commenting or only doing that, like that's still supporting you and still getting your name out there. Um, and also like, I feel like it's important for us to, to help each other in the community. You know, I feel like kind of what Ashley said, you don't want it to be like, you know, you are so forgiving and graceful when it comes to other people. But as soon as your brother or sister mess up, it's just like, oh, I can't do this no more. You know, I done gave you one chance. I gave you one chance to do right by us and you did wrong, you know. But I feel like, you know, as a community, it's important for us to support each other, even when things may not be so good, you know. So like if you use you if you're using somebody's service and I don't know, let's say they got. I don't know, a nail, a nail business, a nail tech or whatever the case may be. They got a nail business. You went and got your nails done and your fingernail was crooked. They put the fingernail on there crooked or you asked for a particular design. They didn't design it exactly how you want it. Give your honest critique and feedback and love because I promise when you do that and it's coming from somebody they know uh, has a, a good, have their best interest at heart they're going to receive it differently. So that's going to allow them to improve on whatever service or product they're providing and, you know, g- get the best quality. So if that that review and critique part is very important. So if you have a bad experience, don't just say, oh, I had a bad experience. I ain't right, going right. back no more. Just be like, I had a bad experience. Let me address it and let them know because they might not even know. Like you say, oh, they're food nasty. Well, they might not even know it has a certain taste to it or it has a certain whatever. And you just letting it go. So, you know, that that review and critique is also important to support each other. And um, I also want to address the thing that Kiki said about the discount. So I definitely don't think that you should just be going around just because somebody is 
has a black business or whatever that you should be um you know asking for handouts or discounts all the time however i shop I don't like to shop in, di in department stores a lot, but you know, I, I shop, you know, I buy different products, buy different things and I'm a shopper and I like discounts. So I don't think, I feel like it should be more appreciative and welcome, you know, like, you know, businesses give discounts, you know, they give customer appreciation, they give 10% off, 20% off. So if somebody, if another brother or sister comes up to you and you have something, they're like, dang, you know, um, you, like, I don't know what the negotiation, whatever they, I don't think we should immediately get offended because people like discounts. They like to save money. So <laughs> I, I think every so often you should have something. I don't think you should immediately take offense. Of, oh, you asked me a discount. I'm going to pay full price. You know, I believe it's definitely important, you know, but dang, just because somebody asks for a discount, don't chew them out. Just like, oh, you better pay full price. Everybody likes to save money. You know, it's a way of going about doing things. Like I said, that's not to say that you should be asking for discounts every time, but don't get offended as a business. Because, I, I mean, businesses are like, they're like, okay, when is going on clearance? When is this going on sale? We want the discounts. So take that into consideration and take think, some oh, customer service. Customer I also service think Kiki plan. was That's referring to the people that want discounts when they're giving discounts, though. Like, I don't I, think it's somebody that's like saying, I want a discount. I think it's somebody that's like, hey, by the way, I got 25% off. So, what you going to give me? I'm your brother. You can yeah, give me 30%. Yeah, and that, and so I'm right. already giving 25%. In the, bla in the black community, no. I don't think that's a discount. In the black community, that's on some. Cut me a master, deal. Master Cut me a break. Master key type shit. That's yeah. the I want the hookup type. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, right. like, it's usually like from somebody that they know like they know yeah. somebody who started a business and they're like man i'm spending money with you you might as well get, get come on and give bro a discount you know like it's usually someone that you know well in the food right. industry when i when i travel and stuff <laughs> a lot um like the type of what you say is totally true about people that you know but i get strangers that ask me stuff but it's always on some 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 like yo i mean what's up with you i mean you gonna give a brother what brother what <laughs> i got you you can get this phone number. That's what you can get. <laughs> you ain't getting no discount, you know. So Sorry. I've had guys that do stuff like that, you know. Um, but I, I just think that uh, I agree with both Whitney and um Kiki. Um, Same. but most definitely uh, as far as Whitney go, I did start. You know, you should offer like loyalty cards, like on the back of your business cards. Yeah. Like do do like little ten to twelve things. So every time they spend over a certain amount, you can stamp it or whatever, yeah. and um you give it to okay. them. And like because people have loyal customers. Like I have loyal customers, you know yeah. whatnot. Um, so I, I do think that. So I think what you should walk away from this is that like uh make sure you listen to everybody, um but offer some type of discount because there is like teachers, military, yeah. um whatever and then do something every month so instead of just being like catching the attitude like what Whitney was saying you can say well follow my business page because we do something we try to do something every month because damn near every month is a holiday like uh March is coming up what tomorrow so mm -hmm. a St. Patrick's Day you know um thing you know wear green on March the 17th you get 10% off you know but uh Daniel what's your um your uh your, your advice your thoughts on that um about supporting black business I definitely agree with Whitney uh, when she was talking in the beginning of what she said, like it just levels to it. Um, right. There has been companies or, or business owners that I've known that don't got nothing to do with anything that I got going on. And they'll be like, hey, you know, I know you got a sister you can buy for. I know like, you know, women will hit me right. up and be like, I'm selling hair. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. I'll post it. <laughs> right, and she's right. like, see, you ain't going. You know, I know you got like a mama that you could buy hundred dollar wig for and i'm like my mama don't wear wigs like it's just wigs? Wigs? i'm you not gonna what? i didn't even think about harassment harassment like stuff. there's like, there's, there's literal yeah, businesses that do that. it's literal mm -hmm. businesses that do that so um wow. and the, if i could i know everybody gave like their opinion if i can get my opinion just if you're just starting out make your prices competitive and that's the main thing with me and that's why a lot of people ask for discounts because you're charging the same as a company that sells something similar to you that's been around for 30 years you're charging the same like i'll give you an example like you don't do this ashley but if ashley's yummy tummy was serving the same prices as red lobster and you just i don't even know if you can cook Right, you know what right. I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm uh, make your prices competitive. That's one thing I had. I had, I own a photography business, a videography business. There's a photographer on every corner. Honestly, right. somebody with a camera wants to start a business. 
You know what I'm saying? So when I'm talking to people about weddings, I ask, so what are the other thing? What are the other companies you will talk to? What are their prices? Or just tell me the other companies that you're involved yeah. with. And I will go to their website and see their prices and make their comprise. Not, I'm not going to lower myself to, to where it's crazy. I still know my worth and I know my work's worth, but I still got to be competitive. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not charging $10,000 for but it depends like, on the business too. I was going well, I mean, to say it, it depends, depends on the but business. You still have to be competitive have, because, be competitive. like, if you it just takes even like that example that you just used. Like, let's say, okay, Ashley does have a, her business, but like Ashley has her business, and let's say she's selling the exact same foods that Red Lobster is selling, and she's charging Red Lobster price. It's going to be a difference because because one, Ashley is the owner she's the cook she's the 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 server she's the all of these things in one person and so i think that that that's the reason why sometimes i think that a lot of the times the products that black businesses offer tend to seem higher in price is because they're working only as one one the one business owner like they're and doing everything that, in the not... business oh go ahead i didn't mean to cut you off i'm sorry no, no, no. I was just saying, like, they're doing everything in the business. So sometimes I think that does reflect in the price. And for some people that may not know about a lot of those things, they may view it as, oh, you know, she's selling what's, whatever the product is at what you call it price. I can go over here and get it for whatever, whatever. So I think it's important to also just kind of be conscious when you're supporting, because that is, it's a difference. Like, you know, we have these expectations of, of black business owners, but it, it is a difference. You know, like when you're considering the price, you're considering who you're buying from. I feel like we should all keep those things in mind about, you know, if, if they're the only person that's providing this, this service or this product and they have to go through a lot to get it prepared, then, you know, don't just automatically think their prices are outrageous. You know, sometimes they definitely are. You know, people price their stuff wrong all the time. But, you know, if it's, it's, if it's somewhat more expensive than somebody else, like, take, in, take that into consideration. And if you don't like it, I mean, you can always just go to somebody else. You don't have to bash anybody's bit. Like, if you don't like the price, you don't have to get on social media and just be like, oh, I don't like the price. Just go to the other person. <laughs> and I, I, totally, I totally get what you're saying, though, about the, as far as, you know, it being that one person that has multiple jobs. I totally understand that. But let's think about the consumer for a minute. The consumer is not going to care about that. You know what I'm saying? And I hate to say it that black and white, but the consumer is not going to care if you own a business and you do everything because in the consumer's mind, they're always right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so baby. that's And, and that's, that's another, that's that's another that's sign that I'm putting on, right. my, on my window. Right. And the thing is, not always right. Right. and they're not always right. And I totally agree with that. But that's just me working in customer service for so long. Like oh, it, it just y'all. doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure everybody in here has worked in customer service. It's just they're right. not thinking about that. They're coming right. in here I, to inquire about a product. And if they're paying any kind of money, they're going to want that product how it is. And they're still going to be like, let's be honest. I mean, I'm sure everybody here has bargain uh, Lou, shop. Lou, can you flip your, flip your phone? You sideways. <laughs> Perfect. All right, go ahead. There you go. Oh, I'm just saying like everybody has bargain shop at one point in time in their life. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has checked this price and then went over mm-hmm. here and checked this price and then went For over sure. here and checked this price. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Esther. Yeah. So I'm just saying like, you know, that's the reason why I say, I'm not saying bring yourself down. If somebody is is charging a, an outrageously low price, then know your worth. But I'm saying at the same time, like I, even right. if I, I've went to weddings, I've had to be the photographer and the videographer by myself i used to have i had to have one camera set up and then still running around for the other camera i'm still going to be competitive with somebody else until i get to the point because i'm not to the point where i can say this is my product you get what i'm saying right yeah. like you yeah, that's what you. i'm saying like kind of like act your wage a little bit like you just started two <laughs> weeks ago and you charging yeah you know, three hundred dollars for a wig different. that you just yeah, made it. If you don't that's have the experience under your belt, then okay. Then yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. I think that's, that's a little different than what Whitney was saying, but I get what you're saying. Let me get some money, yo. Y'all being greedy, dog. <laughs> that's just like um, but with what Daniel was saying, that's just like if we all think about if we think about it, um, we got three nail salons in Marion. One of them 
pedi one of them, their pedicure, their basic pedicure is cheaper. One of them. I'm not sure which one, but one of them, their pedicure is cheaper. Um, you got the Chinese restaurant. Their food started off at one price until they saw the business was was picking up. And then next thing you know, the price is just like what skyrocketed. And yeah. and I love I love my dearly. I love a dearly. When she first started, before she built the restaurant she has now, the one across from McDonald's, when she first started, her prices wasn't like this, what they are now. No. But she got to the point, like, people were coming in Sundays, she's packed out, people having to wait, and then she needed a new building, she tore that down, built a new building, got the stuff in the back, and all that stuff, and now her prices are up, but people people notice it, but they don't notice it to the point, they're like, I ain't coming here no more, and all that stuff, but you do have those other people out there that'll do that to black businesses. When black businesses do the same thing and they get their people coming in and now they get to the point that they can actually go up at least a little bit, not outrageously, but excuse me, at least a little bit in order to even start doing their profit and doing what the business is worth. You got, oh, I, I can't go back there no more. I yeah. can't do it. And right. then that's right. when those ones do come in and be like, well, you know, wait, wait, wait a discount, wait a hookup. Like, it's okay to do your sales. It's okay to do your discounts and stuff, but just because you're my first cousin, don't mean you're supposed to come through here thinking I'm always <laughs> supposed to give you a $25 thing business for $2. Business is business. Business right. is business. Straight up. And so that's, that's I yeah. see like, I see that a lot. I, I mean, even um helping with like Ashley and stuff and seeing like other people and all that stuff, I see that a lot of people is like, well, I'm your cousin. I'm I'm your this. I'm your that. It's either you go, you know, is either you gonna support me and help me, or you not? I mean, you don't go to all three salons and be like, "What's your price?" Right. What's your price? Yeah, and and I, I get a lot of um. I, I'm gonna touch on two things and then we can move on to the second one. Um, as far as like prices go, um, because when you use the Chinese restaurant, uh, consumers, y'all, customers, y'all need to also understand that it's a thing called overhead. You yeah. know, so she started out wherever she started out at, but then she wanted to make it more instead of just more of a walk in and pick up, take out service. She's made it to where you can dine in now, yep. you know, so that comes with a price. So I I frequent that place back in the day a lot. So I've witnessed uh, her sitting down with like an account manager and they, they I've overheard them say, you need to increase this. You need to do that. You know, where her prices was too low. And trust me, when I have moved to Columbia compared to a Marion Chinese restaurant in Columbia, like, I'm like, oh, I ain't used to paying these prices, but I know I ain't in that area no more, you know, but mm -hmm. over here. So for me, using me, using transparency, I'm getting a food truck bill. I got to go up on my prices because I just invested in something that cost me a house. Or whatever. And then also I got to hire more employees. So yeah. where I just used to have two employees, now I'm going to need five employees, you know, so I got to take care of that. And then also because of COVID, food prices have went up on certain things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so you have to, you know, you just look at it like that. Let's use some common sense type stuff or whatever. Yeah. All right. Hey. But you have anything you want to add to that to close that out? Yeah, later? I have a lot I want to add. I'll just let y'all okay. take y'all time. All right. Oh, Look. hold on now, Lou. Pop it down now. I'm good. I said I was letting y'all take y'all time. You didn't hear that? Oh, okay, okay. It's all, of, it's all about how you interpret things. You intake, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, this is just a conversation space. I mean, sometimes you jump in, jump out. I mean, you say what oh, no, people I'm what patient, you know? I let, I let people talk because that's respect, you know what I'm saying? So cutting off somebody, okay. that's disrespect, but people interpret or well, intake things the wrong way. Like, you thought I probably got aggressive with you but i did oh okay. you know what i'm saying yeah we we so double dutch is, here we, we jump rope me. on this show we yeah we, we jump rope a whole lot yeah we okay. double dutch we double yeah. dutch yeah, we yeah. Jump well, what we like to say we're gonna we're gonna uh jump on to the next one how you go ahead though, you good oh you no good. go ahead now nah, y'all good go ahead go ahead jump on because i gotta you go sure? in like 25 minutes okay okay yeah. so um i i kind of got this from um from you lou um, looking at how you post and how you um, encourage people, uh, entrepreneurship and stuff. So I titled it The Harriet Struggle, The Underground Railroad. And, you know, basically from a history lesson, a quick history lesson or whatnot, uh, you know, she was the one that led you to freedom. And so I think what I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Lou, but I think you trying to encourage people to like be more entrepreneurs, self-employed or whatnot. 
But just like back then and even a little bit now, you know, with, I, what was the movie, Django? Like you had some slaves that wanted freedom. So they, they followed her and listened to free to go to freedom. But then also at the same time, you had the type of slaves that was like, oh no, I'm, I'm comfortable here. So that's why I said the path to freedom, which is black ownership. And then also you have the plantation stability, which is, um, don't please don't take this the wrong way, you guys that are watching. But um, please I know don't. that please we, don't. We, ha we have to have jobs. I get that. Please don't. But, but also in the process of you maintaining your job for stability and comfort and to have a roof over your head, you can also take time to either on your lunch break or on your days off, you can do other side hustles to make sure that you have extra sources of income and to the fact where you can get off that plantation, leave out that factory, leave from that manufacturer, you know? So that's why I said the path of freedom, which is black ownership, and then also the plantation stability. Because people, when I meet people, I know I'm built different. I know I'm wired different. Like I just met a guy who said he was at a job for 15 years. I was like, what the fuck? Mm, I ain't never God. been that committed mm. to something. I mean, that's remarkable, you know, but I've just never to picture myself at somebody's job giving them 15 years of my life. And I don't have nothing to show for it, but still paying rent and still like that's. But how do you feel about that, um, Lou? The, the path to, uh, yeah, uh, the path to uh, black ownership are the, the people who prefer to stay confined in the walls of the, you know, their the security of their job. Yeah, yeah, just you know, just to provide for the family, you know, right. keep it like that. But um, to each his own with it, you know. Uh, if you feel like you could be able to own your own boss and handle the, the job to the performance that you could produce. Or that I can put up, then you know you you can leave your. It's all about you. If you have faith in yourself, and you know, like like I say, like you just have to, you know, if you have faith in yourself and you're able to provide it. I mean, you know, do the services like the boss man could do it. Then you know that. Then you could probably take on your leadership and probably invest in something you would want to do. But you know, if you have like your record allows you not to get a business license or anything you may have to take the other route you know just follow you know instructions so it's like and you know either i got this decision or i have to make this decision because my co-partner ain't gonna help out with this decision then i gotta move on to the next decision you know what i'm saying so it's all about your record and all about your leadership uh all about like basically care yourself your character so Right. Hey, you and got I, a good I, background, it's speak for you. You know what I'm saying? So as, it's yeah, like especially when you go to venture off on your own, like like you said, the background and the character. When you when you go to reach out, uh, branch out on your own, people know your or respect your your work ethic, so they'll support you. You know. Yeah, that's that's basically it. And the, um, like I said, it's it's your decision. Like we know some people can't get jobs. We know some people don't have. You know car insurance, you know, people struggling right now. So like I said, man, I just asked someone to respect me at my job. I don't think I'm your friend. It is business, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to get this job done. That's it. Like, I'm not, I provide five stars. That's it. If your life don't match mine, then this job, you know, may not be for you. You know, your outside duties, you handle that. But when you come to this job, make sure you have your mind right and perform this job. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I treat my job like a warehouse job. That's why I always work at. I got I have my CDL, you know, I have other things coming. I can't tell everybody that. But you know, so it just right. you, you know, you just have to be able to perform that job the right way, just like you'll do at at another company, Wal Walmart, McDonald's. Don't don't, you know, don't try to disrespect my job if I'm gonna start you off at a certain price number one. You know, I'm feeding your pockets. So if you can't perform a job and a certain amount of hours is scheduled in, then your performance start to go down. I worked that performance, that's what we had to do. We had to perform. So right. what that means, perform this every night. We had to run a 95%. Then it went up to 100%, you know? So I was a guy running 140, 150 every night, you know? So, and at the end of the week, I average off like a 135 or 140. So, you know, we, we was getting paid incentive, you know, bonuses. So we was getting paid different ways. So it, you know, I just carried the same model. Hey man, right. it, it, hey, 
<laughs> and I see, man that I don't see you, you know work, he don't eat. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I see can't. you post. I see you post um something where you said uh make a hundred dollars in two to three hours, or make a hundred dollars in eight hours. It, and you know that's too much money. Come on now. You know what I'm saying? Just it's just to get people to move out the house. Bros don't want to move because they were relying on the government assistance. I'm gonna be 100 with you. No woman don't want no guy on the government assistance. Anyone ain't applying himself. Nobody don't want that. Nobody like that. You know what I'm saying? Then it, it just straight up. Like, I mean, if you ain't out here applying yourself to these hands, the tools you blessed with, then I mean it's hard to come by somebody like that to be stable and feel protected, feel, you know, it's Women want all these securities. You got to know the woman. So that's why it's a must. We all get to know ourselves, you know? Right. So getting to know who you are, you'll be able to provide and, you know, work on things. We all go through struggles and, you know, mental health issues. Hey, it is what it is, but you got to know how to manage things. You got to know how to take care of your body. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I say it's always about what you intake, you know? So I drank my water. See, I started, you know, I, I just sterilized my water and stuff like that. Because, you know, the tap water ain't good for you. So if you're not drinking alkaline water, you want to make alkaline water. So that's with a lemon and lime or fruit. So, you know, you got to understand the benefits behind all of this. So that's what I provide. You know, if you need any addition or help or how to wake up fast, you know, do the daily, you know, uh, intakes on anything, you know, I, I provide that. So workouts, you know, I'm a provider. So I, I, that's what I do. It's a body movement specialist. It's an overall thing. You know what I'm saying? So from moving. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna separate it soon, you know, so everybody have an understanding. It's separated. If you look at things on on uh U-Haul, the moving services, and look at the prices right there, you'll have an understanding why I charge my prices. So don't don't lowball me. My boy Eric McFadden set the prices for the end town. So hey man, you gotta go with that. So I, I can't lower my prices because you can't afford the prices, you know. So absolutely. Yeah. So Thank you. Uh, Kiki, how do you feel about that? How do you, uh, people struggling between doing black ownership, like going into business for themselves versus just the comfort of just staying at the plantation or a factory for, for forever? You know, how do you feel about that? Okay, so Michelle got to come in a little bit here. Go ahead. That's a tag. But um, my, my whole thing is Everybody can't be a pastor because everybody's not called to be a pastor. And I, and I use it that way because, you know, a pastor is the, the head of that particular building. Right. Now, he's not the owner of it, but he's the head of that particular building. So the thing is, if everybody's a pastor, then who's your deacon? Who's your choir member? Who's your this? Who's your that? So... For someone that not necessarily out of a comfort, they can dedicate 15 years or more to a job, then that's what they can do. Because if you don't have your factory workers, you don't get your, you don't get certain foods, you don't get your cars, you don't get, it's a bunch of stuff that we wouldn't get without the factory workers. Um, but now if they are there just for a comfort and you have been gifted and talented to do more and to own your own and everything, I feel like, you know, they should try to run for that freedom and get there. Right. But everybody's not called to do that, that head thing. Like, I'm not saying nobody don't have a, like, you know, everybody don't have a calling. Yes, you have a calling. There's something you're supposed to do. And there's something you can do to benefit any and everything, not any and everything, but to benefit, uh, to be a benefit, but everybody can't be a pastor. So I don't necessarily say you got some that's comfortable being at the plantation and then you got those that's not comfortable. But then you have those that don't understand, don't know, don't have anybody to guide them or to lead them. My great grandparents were sold off the, off the slave ship at the plantation in Charleston. So the whole thing is they got they had got received their freedom later, but it's just still the point that they got, you know, they got captured basically. Right. Because I'm quite sure if it was up to them, they'd have stayed over there. But so yes, I don't really look at it as a a, a freedom or a captive thing, what I, what I can say or 
how I can say, I would look at it as embrace what has been embedded in you. Em- embrace your gift. Embrace your talent. Reach for it. Try for it. it it's going to take time. It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take a whole bunch of stuff. Like you, like pastors, they sacrifice. They go through things. They, all, they, they do all that stuff. That's like a prophet. You can be called a prophet, but everybody can have the gift of prophecy. It's a, it's a difference to it. So, right. Right. So, so, yeah. so basically, what I'm saying in here, uh, for those that are watching, um, don't quit your job, but make it make sense. So, like, if you're working your job, your factory job, but you also, let's say you um do, uh, you make t-shirts, you know, or jackets, do that while you still like on the side of your hustle but once you see you you start making let's say consistency let's say for the last year or two or two years that you've made more money doing your t-shirt or jacket business versus being there and you know you're devoting so much time to that company you start wondering like well how much would i really make if i took the eight hours eight to twelve hours that i spent there and i actually put it inside my you know my business that's what i'm saying so, uh, Courtney, how do you feel about it? Um, um, honestly, what Kiki, uh, Kiki, I don't call you Kiki. I don't know why. I don't know why that's even trying to come out my mouth. Um, <laughs> what Kisa was saying, I was feeling that because I'm like, not everybody, not everybody wants or needs to be a CEO or you know start a business and stuff like that. It's basically what you're saying. Those workers, you need those workers there. Um, and I think you were saying like people should focus on maybe having multiple sources of income you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, well, you're not just I, relying on the white man, you know, per se. Right, because you, you know the business venture that I'm trying to at least, you know, begin to right, start right, right. interesting in, but that's not necessarily like something that, like it's a CEO, it's just, you know, it's just a bit, you know, the, I don't know how to describe it without, you know, saying it, but it's not that type of business where I'm like a CEO type of figure. So it's- that's your, But you will be. Yeah. Kind of you're, you're the really. founder of it. You will be the CEO once you listen. You put whatever you want to put on your business card, baby. <laughs> you could be the president. Really, but that's how I, I feel. You though, Courtney. I feel what you. <laughs> yeah, that's basically how I feel about it. I mean, everybody's just not and cut out is not the word, but not everybody wants to be a CEO. Not everybody needs right, to be right a CEO. Um, yeah. So, all right. Uh. Uh, Daniel, how do you feel about it? I did. I did step away while you talk. Can you just repeat the question for me? Yeah. Um. Basically, Harriet Tubman struggles. You know. Uh. You know. She tried to repeat. Uh. Try to leave people, black people, slaves to the path of freedom, but some people went with her, and some people stayed because of the stability of what they had there, what they already knew. So, bringing it to modern terms, some people choose not to be in business for themselves, make their own money. They rather just stay at factories or plant plants are you know for years and not do anything else and after they retire then they still complaining about they ain't got enough money to do this they ain't got you know so how do you feel about that um i mean we we just got to get out of our own way sometimes all right and one of the one of my favorite quotes is uh there's no growth in comfort and there's no comfort in growth so a lot of times a lot of people they're not afraid of failure they're afraid to succeed because they're not going to know what to do next. Like, I didn't think I'd make it this far. So now I'm kind of scared. I'm freaked out. They're uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? And they, they don't realize that, Oh, you're stepping out of your comfort zone. You're really growing. That's the reason why you're uncomfortable. A lobster doesn't know that it needs to molt from its shell until it gets uncomfortable. That shell gets too tight. You know what I'm saying? We can't Come on, continue. Daniel. I'm just saying <laughs> we can't continue to like <laughs> to conform to the plateau. You know what I'm saying? Um, we can't continue to grow a little bit and then be like, okay, that's enough. And then just stay the straight line. There are right. some people that are totally content with doing that. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? If you're content with your nine to five, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to grow. I, I, I tried to, pro- I was a supervisor and I tried to uh, promote, uh, a, a worker of mine into another uh, position that was like mine and he was like nah you know what I'm saying I don't want to do it I don't and I was like why he was like because I don't want to I don't want no more responsibility for two dollar raise and I'm telling him like it's not about 
the raise. It's about the your resume. Yeah, the experience. You know what I'm saying? So now, like me, I can literally go to a job and be like, you have a management position open. I have right. management experience. You know what I'm saying? This is what I can, this is what I expect from my pay wage. You know, I, 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 this is, but there's people that's content with still being on fries at McDonald's instead of being the general mentor. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. If, you, if that's what you want, just don't complain. That's, that's, when you're that's broke. the issue there, the complaining and right. the coming and barring, trying to borrow money from me. I ain't got. <sighs> It's, it's, it's a candy. Yeah, that, that's what that's what I get. And, that, and whenever somebody complains about like, well, I don't, you know, I want to do more. I want to do more. I can't do more. Why can't you? Why you think you can't do more? Because you already used the wrong word in your vocabulary. Can't. Right. And that's stifling you. More than, you know, it's stunting your growth more than, you know, our tongue is just like cigarettes. You smoke cigarettes, you put negativity on your tongue. You are not going to grow. The, the, the universe has no choice but to listen to what you profess. That's the power that God gave us. You know what I'm saying? So that's my thoughts on it. I don't know if that makes sense to what you, because that question is a little bit confusing. But <laughs> Well, you good. answered it pretty well. But okay, confused. good, good. How do you feel about it? With me? Um, I pretty much co-sign what everybody said. I think everybody pretty much summed it up. You know, I feel like before you got to crawl, before you can walk. So, you know, it's definitely necessary for you to have dreams and aspirations outside of what you're doing for someone else so if you're clocking in and out and you're whatever you're doing is fulfilling somebody else's dream or whatever you're doing is putting money in somebody else's pocket and the only thing you're getting paid for is what you do in an hour like yeah you definitely need to think about other ways to to put into uh put things in uh, out there for yourself and to go not even if you don't want to necessarily go into business like create your own streams of income and I definitely feel what Courtney was saying, you know, some things you don't want to necessarily grow or be the owner, operator, or, you know, make it go any further. So, like, just say, for instance, like with blogging. So I have my own blog site. But of course, you know, if you're really into blogging like that, you can make money off of it. You can monetize and make money off of that, um, you know, but. Some people do it, some people don't. So for me, I really just want to have a platform where I'm able to communicate like my opinion on certain topics, bring awareness, highlight different people in the community. Like that's just what I want to use it for. You know, so that that's that could be an area where I, I create a stream of income, but that may not be my primary source. That may be something I just, you know, want some money on the side and I want to do something to buy the else. groceries. Um, say that again. No, I'm just saying something to buy the groceries. It doesn't have yeah, to be a six yeah. figure thing. Like if you make a hundred dollars a week, that's still a profit. You put that towards your life. Right, right. So true, I totally true. agree. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I totally agree. No, no, you could say you could, yeah. Like so stuff like that. And um, I don't know if anybody had a chance to um uh well, I know Ashley did. I don't know if anybody had a chance to read the blog featured guest that I did with my cousin, who's a, a financial analyst. But a part in the interview, we were talking about um creating generational wealth. And also about um, creating these seven streams of income or multiple streams of income. And, you know, that's definitely good. And I think sometimes, though, people get caught up and I need to have three and four jobs. Like I need to be selling plates. I need to be doing this. I need to be doing that. I need to be doing that. The goal is not to have seven jobs. You don't need seven right. jobs. You need you need to be doing something that's going to also be making you Works that you're you. going to be earning passive yeah, you're going to be earning passive income. Mm -hmm. So you need something that's going to be making money while you are, you don't, you know, sleep. you out doing whatever. While you're yeah, sleep. while you sleep. <laughs> while yeah. you sleep, but your business Residual is making income. money. Yeah, so, you know, that's that's also something to think about. Like, you don't want to be just busy and doing work. Like, you don't want to have to be doing the groundwork for seven different things or seven different businesses. So that's why it's also good to strategize like if you need somebody's help like there are consultants out there that can help you strategize because there are people out there that have so many great ideas mm -hmm. and they're gifted in so many different areas and it's hard for them to kind of devote their their thoughts and focus just to one thing but you do have to uh, strategize those things and businesses to get the most out of them mm -hmm. so that's something to think about um and also too i was going somewhere else with that um Oh, yeah. So like when you're creating these businesses and you're getting multiple streams of income, the important thing is to like, what are you doing with the money? 
So, you know, okay, you're getting the money. Like, I feel like if you start off, you're just, you have a nine to five or you're clocking in and out, you got an hourly salary, whatever you have, you know, you have that, but you know, you, you use part of that money. You're like, Hmm, I want to start like, actually, I want to do a food truck. I want to do whatever you take part of that money, invest in whatever the business is you want to get that you get your food truck going. And now the first income was supporting the food truck. Now your food truck may support a different business. And you know, that's how you do. Like you would still have to be conscious. I guess it's just money management. Like in it, addition it to starting those businesses. That's definitely, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and creating those streams of income, it's important to realize and understand how are you managing that money? Because again, I think I see it a lot of times and people just get so stuck in that, like they got this business, that business, this business, and they're literally working. Like you're not creating, I mean, I'm not going to say they're not creating generational wealth, but you know, because you do have to put your time in, you know, you got to work in and get stuff off the ground and all of those things. But once you get it to that point, you should step back. You should be doing less and less work. You know, you hit the ground running when you first start out putting all the work. As your business grows, you should be stepping back and back where your business can operate. That's why it's important when you're starting out, like, you know, you maybe it is just you, but as you grow, you get more money, you get more sources, you start, right. okay, I need to hire an assistant. I need an assistant right, because right. I can't I can't pay attention to overbook and I got this appointment, that appointment. Okay, you need to hire an assistant. You get an assistant. You say, you know what? I need to I need to hire me like even if you got a hair shop, you know, you're doing everybody's hair. You're like, I, I need more time to just focus on doing hair. You know, I might need to just hire a shampoo person. I need somebody who's right, just going to come right. in and shampoo the hair so I don't have to worry about that. So as you elevate, you have to think about what's going to make it easier and more efficient for business. You know, a lot of people like to do everything on their own. Like they... I used to be like that. I used to be like that. Hold up, Whitney. Whitney phone froze. Hold up. Well, until her, her her thing come back, I used to be like that. I was that person that was trying to do everything. Um, and the reason why I was trying to do everything is because my name was on it. My brand, my name is a brand. Like I, I am on it. So I used to didn't be, I was in the back cooking, you know? And so looking toe up, hair tied, apron, you know, looking toe up until uh, what, what brought me from the back up to the front was because people, because the post that I would, would do would go viral a lot. So when I was basically on tour, when I would go to different cities and stuff, they'd be like, who is Ashley Money? Who is that? Who is that? And so they would want to like see me and meet me and stuff like that. So I had to be more upfront, you know, um, so okay. I could greet, greet people, talk to people. But do you know how hard that was for me? Because I want to touch my food. Well, it's your I baby. Was- you know what I'm saying? Exactly. So baby. I started doing like, uh, go, like you're, I don't know if y'all familiar who's watching the Hell's Kitchen. So, you know, like Gordon Ramsay, like people uh, uh bring the plate up and they be like, here you go, chef. So now that's how I can kind of touch my food a little bit. Like I have to open the box. You bring it to me open. Well, I open it when you sit it down and then I inspect it. And then I, and I'm so fucking glad I did that because they be messing up a lot and it reflects to me reflect back on me because people go to the business page they type the review you know and then i'll be like well ma'am i wasn't aware of that and then a lady checked me respectfully she was like well you hired them they're a reflection of you and i was like she right so that's when i was like open the box and even i got employees that's been working with me for a couple years but now i'm going to have to hire more people new people and so now they're I've promoted them per se for the ones that need it, but there's ones that still stuck in the same position that they've been being, even though they feel like they should have a higher position, but they just ain't the work ethic. Certain things aren't there, you just know, because you've been there for years. Don't mean yeah. you deserve that. Right. You know, I had, a um, I had, a, um, the first time I ever had gotten help. Uh, I had a, a partner that helped me out with a wedding and I, tried to do what you did, tried to take a step back, all that, and I divvied up the responsibility. I worked on the video. She worked on the pictures. Took her almost four months to get me those pictures. Now, granted, now, we took over 500 pictures, okay? It's a wedding. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take, I, I like to say, give me the window is between 14 days and two months. Then come start asking me questions. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why the reason why I don't have your product for you. So these people, I mean, this girl, um, I'm like, hey, they're at the, the client is asking for these pictures. I need to know what to tell them. I don't have the pictures. 
you have the pictures. So I need to know what's going on. I already got the video done. You know what I'm saying? And um, it just reflect uh, that was a lesson learned for me as to the reason yeah. why I wanted to put my hands in everything because yeah. they know I'm over the business. Yep, yeah. yeah. it comes you know back. What I'm saying? Back so it's back. like it's all it's all it's about back. perception, and that that's the point I was making. Just just piggybacking on what I was saying about the first question. It's just all about perception. The consumer don't want to hear, oh, well, I'm still trying to get in touch with my assistant now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They don't want to hear that. You know, they want to hear, okay, we'll have this on this date, and we'll either have it before or on the date that I told you. You know what hey. I'm saying? So that, it does make it hard. It makes it so hard. Hey, D. D. Yo. Hey, you know how I roll, how I used to oh, roll yeah. football. So yeah. I need, well. I need workers like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. The reflection of, like, what I do actually do every day and that's just yeah. what it was man and that's yeah. what it was back Bad then and that's what it is now you know what i'm saying yeah. like right. definitely straight like that straight like that definitely all right so we took we talked um everybody answered right everybody answered. okay so let's light let's lighten up the mood a little bit so i got a scenario Great. for you all right <laughs> so let's say you got your co-workers y'all cool Say hey, let's go out for some. Let's go do some trap karaoke. You know, after work, let's do some drinks. Let's do some hookah. Let's whatever. You know, so you got your Caucasian coworker on I stage at trap karaoke, and they they rapping, and then they say the n word. How do you feel about that? Are you on some? Are you offended? And you're like, oh, hell no. I know Chad did not say the N-word. Not no. Chad. Or, or no. are you on some, hey, Chad, do you realize by you saying the N-word, I took offense to that? Come on, yeah. buddy. Like, So, Lou, let's start it out. How do you feel I'm about, at the voice about you gave Chad saying the N-word? Right. So, so like I said, it's about how you intake it, right? Okay. Because you listen to hip-hop and rap every day. You get what I'm saying? So, you can listen to uh, uh, Megan or somebody else calling you a BBB or a dude calling you a BBB all day, you know? And then then you get a, you don't get offended, but by the time a man in the street disrespect you, you get offended. But how you let this song call you this and that, and then you get offended? Like, it's all about how you ain't take it, you know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's the song, though. It's the, the, it's the Caucasian dude there. saying well, the end well, well, he could be Caucasian or black, bro. It, you know what that the song is not called he, he, specifically. He, he, gotta, he gotta do what make him money. You get what I'm saying? So you gotta look at it like that. That that doesn't bother me. That man gotta make his money. Hey, you gotta say that word. That's why they put Wait, it in. No, there. Well, no, 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 no. That, that, let me let me be, let me further explain what she's talking about. This scenario, right. the scenario is the you and your co-workers, nigga. but yeah, but you and your co-workers, like he's your co-worker. It's not like somebody's right. performing or or oh, okay, he's your co-worker okay. a doing co-worker. karaoke. And Sorry he's saying, that. like, yeah, he's saying the N word. And should you feel offended about somebody that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, not necessarily uh, an entertainer, but Chad, got the co worker. Yeah, okay. that's what she was saying. Okay, Sorry. Got you. Uh, mm, yeah, I have pulled him to the side. <laughs> <laughs> you, see how, you see how quickly you're. Yeah, yeah. 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 Quickly, I have to pull okay, him to the side. Salute, so are you saying <laughs> it's okay for white boy Chad? If he was a rapper, it's okay for him to say it because that's, that's his job. That's his job. But just because, you know, he's just having fun after mm-hmm. work and he says it in a song, you, you say, pull him to the side. Hey, boy, I didn't I didn't heard it. Like, okay. I mean, I, I think we all have. I, I that's look, why I want to you know, bring it up. I think we all heard it. I gave it. him that look yeah. like that. Like, hold up. No. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, like I said, I'm not a nigga. I know who I am. Right. You get what I'm saying? So that's why it's all about how you and take what someone interprets, you know what I'm saying? So that's up to you. Like I said, he can say what he want to say. They say it in music all day. It is what it is. It's all about how you intake. All right. It's all about your, you know, so all about your emotions, how you intake that. It can't hurt your heart. Somebody call you that. You, you are. I mean, that's you. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Courtney, how do you feel about it? Uh, you hear Brenda uh, say, <laughs> nigga. These names. <laughs> okay. okay. So, how do you feel about it? Are you like Brenda? You know better. Well, okay. So this is speaking from experience. Um, in California, I think 
I don't know if there's like a group of black people somewhere in California who just like enable these people and let them say this word, but a lot of them are very comfortable with saying that word. Just they're just real comfortable with it, especially like with a certain climate of how things are. You think that people would probably be more precautious, like with you know the conversations going on, like like especially on social media and stuff like that. But they are really comfortable saying this word. And I've heard, you know, arguments from both of the sides, like you know, of the reason like why they say it and stuff like that. But I just, I, I just, I don't understand their side of the argument because my thing is, is that if you're in an argument with a person who's not black, it's one of the first things that come to mind that they want to call you. You know what I mean? When they get upset. So it's like, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's hard for me to just accept that. And so, but I get that there are, there are black people who are like, no, they can say it, da 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 da. So I kind of have to tread that line, especially dealing with these people out here in California. My thing is, is that um, you kind of have to respect me when it comes to that situation, because I just like I can't speak for all black people, they can't speak for all black people either. If you don't hear me saying it around you, if you don't <laughs> see me, you know, just telling you that you could say that word around me, stuff like that, don't say it. But I, I mean. If that's how you feel, that's how you feel. Just don't say it around me if you want to respect me. I yeah. I just I don't I mm, I don't like the I don't like people who are not black saying that word. It does something to me. I don't it just I don't like it. And it's just it's kind of mm, I don't know. And I think that I really do think part of the issue is because there are black people, you know, that let people of non-black oh. say that word. That's, hey, that's 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 my that's where I'm struggling with because it's like I'm trying to be like well you know there's people saying that it's okay for them to say it so that's mm-hmm. why they're saying it that's why they're hey. so comfortable to say it but if I'm gonna sit here and hear you say it I know it makes me feel some type of way so I can only control that word when it's around me you know what I mean yeah so that's just that's just kind of, kind of how I am I'm not gonna I don't know I don't know I just don't like the word hey it, it, it's the difference. Dance. It's the difference between nigga and ne- ne- negro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I've heard that too, so, and I disagree because I don't care if you have an E R or an A F that you're not black. I don't want to hear you say it. And it's that's that's facts. Words. That's facts. It, that don't mean nothing. I'm gonna it be don't, but I mean, I don't call people nigga. You know what I'm saying? If, if I approach you, I'm like, hey fam or hey Daniel. You know what I'm saying? I'm not approaching yeah. you, hey nigga, hey nigger. You know what I'm saying? A negro. That's disrespectful right there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's, it's about how you approach somebody, yo. It's and, and it's not nice to use the word. I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the topic I don't of discussion that. as far yeah. as like black people. They're saying like, should we just like eradicate the word? Period. Yeah, but people, yeah, but, but people are trying to say, but black people are trying to say that they're trying to take a hold of the word and spin it and make it positive by you know by saying, oh, what's up? You know, greeting like, hey, what's up? You yeah. know, yeah. That's my I name, keep you know. talk about that. Um, I, I forgot saying. what it was. It was like an interview or something that Ice Cube did. Like, I think it was like years ago and he was talking about um, using the N-word or whatever. And that was his take on it. He was just like, his thing was, yeah, like the word meant whatever it meant. But now that we have ownership of the word, yeah, we gonna use it and no, you still can't use it. It's just like, you know, you've already defined how you use the word, but we've already taken ownership of this word and we've given it a different meaning. Because I mean, honestly, if you look at the word, the N word, just like the B word, it's like initially it has a, a negative connotation, but they have been so many other ways to define it that's attached to it. It's really dependent on who it's coming from. Like personally, I feel like with the N word, I just feel like, you know, at, at some point you got to pick a side. You know, I feel like at some point you're going to have to decide if you're not okay with the word, you know, because I feel like if you start just saying, okay, well, it's, it's cool for this person to say it, and it's, it's cool for this person and not that person, you're getting in very sticky areas. So I think it's important for us to kind of think about like, is it the word? Is it the word that we don't like or is it just the people? And I feel like, you know, at that point, you really have to do, you really have to pick a side when it comes to, to that word. You know, is this something I'm going to allow or is it something I'm okay with or not? And I feel like with uh, everything that Courtney said, you know, it's it's kind of, 
it's like a toss up, but it's just like at the same time, I know I'm not going to be comfortable or allow somebody to, to just come out their mouth sideways when you're in my presence, when you're around me, my family, and my friends. Now, it's a difference. You can go out there wherever you go. You know, as nobody check you over there, I can't run up on nobody and say, oh, you let him do this and you let him do that. Because at the end of the day, that man or that woman is their own person. You're not responsible for that person's actions. And you're not responsible if they get socked in the mouth for saying something. That's up to, you know, whoever in the situation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, every, everything, you know, you can't, you can't everything y'all control. saying is right. Everything you saying yeah, is right. You nothing, got, nothing ain't wrong. You know what I'm saying? So ain't no disagreements with it. Everything ain't right. They need to get a, get rid of the word straight up. You know, you know what it also is is that I think I mean this this is just a added on like story that I have to tell. But you know how like some like people who are not black they like they're like oh it's just a song it's just this and all stuff like that yeah. but you know there was this girl that i used to work with she said the word and i don't normally say that word like that's not in my i cuss a lot but the that word is not something that i say all the time it'll come out here and there but it's right. not something and i'm ne and i know that i make it a point not to say that word in front of people who are not black and so yeah. she had said it and she said it real comfortably and i made a face and if she was truly just like, that's just the word, is da 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 da, blah, 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 she wouldn't have reacted to my face. But she reacted mm -hmm. to it and she did not say it again when she saw my face. I didn't say anything about it. I made a face. So obviously, you have another definition with that word if you saw that I was uncomfortable with you saying it. All right. And if, especially right. when you know where it comes from. You know All what I'm right. saying? Um, and uh, real quick, uh, Lou is going to head out. Um, Lou, you can head out. You can drop off the call uh, whenever you can. But um, And then I'll still promote your business and everything after. Right, thank after you. I'll do the same. Y'all send me y'all business to my, uh, uh, just send it to my page, I guess. Right. I'll do it like that. Y'all have a good night. Thank y'all. You too, no, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, another thing I want to say about the word uh, dealing with what, what uh, Whitney was saying um, about ownership of the word, like black people, black people um, uh, want to take ownership of the word. Um, another way, uh, by another way you can look at it is like I've I've heard like watching uh, specials and stuff where uh, Caucasian people, white people, would say, uh, "Yes, we still got them using that." Like it doesn't matter how we flip it or yeah. embrace each other with it like at the end of the day you're still calling yourselves niggas like just like when the incident happened with the uh the little boy that had the, the coolest monkey in the jungle like you yeah. can't even call a black person a monkey or say you look like a monkey without a black person being like about to tear your mm -hmm. ass up but yeah, yeah. You, you still feel comfortable calling each other niggas like our nigga you know even though my question for that is why can't why can't we if, if that's what we're comfortable with and not to cut you off but I wanted to say this, like there's there's words for different races that they use for themselves. We're not the only one, nor are we the first one to yeah. take a word that was meant for for negativity and adopt it into something positive. You know what I'm saying? I have plenty of Hispanic friends. Like plenty, mulatto. Like plenty of I have plenty of uh, uh Spanish you gotta friends. Change her name though. And they use they use the S word. That was you know the S word. They use they use plenty yeah, plenty of words. The big that, lotto. You know what? You're so right, Daniel, because I used to live in Del Rio, Texas. That population is nothing but Hispanics most, right. for the most part. And they all use the, the, the B word. The, they use the, the B word. They use the they S word. Watch them, but the beaner, they all they all used it as like their own little slang. Of course, I never said that because I wasn't trying to have no problems. But right. they all use that. That being said, they also use the M word too. But that's another story for a different day. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just a simple fact of like, a lot of people say I'm just and I'm just re rebuttaling over what you said, Ashley. And uh, thank you, Courtney, for backing me up on that. Like, it's just literally like we can't have nothing. You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's what the annoying part is, because I'll even talk about the Caucasian race. The C word. They call themselves that the R word in the South. They call themselves that. You know what I'm saying? At Marion High School, I've had plenty of Caucasian friends that refer to themselves I'm sorry for anybody Caucasian. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying the word for people that don't know. They call themselves rednecks. But as soon as if we say it, it's a derogatory manner. You get what I'm saying? Well, but now we they ain't rednecks anymore. Now they just Trump supporters. Well, but you, <laughs> you get what I'm saying though. Like right, yeah, I got so you. why yeah. can't why can't we if we want to because I'm totally with what Whitney was saying about uh about what Cube said. Um it's 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 yeah, we took that word, we spun it. Yeah, yeah, we're using it, but we're not. It's it. You can 
you're getting mad if we say the R word or the C word to you. You get offended to that. And it's the same ones that get offended to that that want to use the N word. Tell me I'm lying. You know what I'm saying? Right. They want to use the N word. They want to be like, oh, they want to get comfortable in the bed and be like, mm-hmm. hey, these 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 N words. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's I, what I'm tired of is the double standard. This, and the reason why is because this word at one point in time was embedded in my vocabulary. Like I had to really train myself to be professional because I'd be at work. Like, man, you know, this end getting on my nerves after they leave. Like, and I'm like, I can't really say that when half my staff is white. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, no, I got to really. Definitely can't say right. That. Like, and that's what I had. I did have to learn, like, there's a time and a place. But at the same time, like, if I want to, if somebody comes in and they visit me and I'll be like, ah, my nigga. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. and people be like, oh, my God. And it's like, well, y'all literally call each other the R word and the C word. Why can't we have a word for ourselves? Why can't we have anything? You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what it is. Yeah. Like that's that's what bothers me more than anything. Like All right. we just can't have nothing. Kiki, what's your thoughts on it? Okay, so listening to everybody and listening to everything, I can agree, I can disagree. But one thing that like are you are you yeah. pulling, are you pulling? your co-worker to the side and saying don't say that are you like okay i don't care it's just a word um no i'm just i'm not saying it's just a word but i'm not gonna pull them to the side because one they're performing like <laughs> it ain't no rap show that, you know i know it's not they getting paid and stuff but they right. sing a karaoke if it's the song okay. and they singing the song they gonna do it they i mean you just say the words just as if if we were singing one they song and they put redneck in it we're singing it so my but my thing is redneck doesn't have the same history as that. Yeah, word. I don't think I, 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 I get I get hey, that. I'm, just, I'm but what I'm just saying is first, like first thing is first as far as where the where all of the words come from, whether it's Caucasian, whether it's cracker, right. whether it's redneck, whether it's nigga, whatever, wherever it came from. The only thing about that is each one of them, it all has a some got different meanings, like I said, and some got a whole another totally different meaning, like I have said. So you got parts of the United States, they don't look at that as offensive because they never had had the slavery or had the anything like that around them. They wasn't raised with that. They wasn't, uh, they had to learn as far as the history of that. Like, because it really wasn't up north and out there, especially like California stuff, like you said, you were surprised at the people that's out there and they can say it and stuff, Courtney, because they, they, that's not what they had. They I see, like, I see what you're saying, but the fact that you, it's like, <laughs> it's like um, a child stealing something or something like that. Like they know that's not what they're supposed to do. Right. But because they're a child, they're supposed to get away with it. No, and that's not. That's I was not born. What I, in, I was kind of born and raised in Connecticut, and we still didn't. But that's, tolerate that's that like time. the analogy. Like that's you. You're aware of what that you. You're aware that people are offended by that. So that doesn't yeah. just grow up with the repercussions of saying it. That doesn't mean it should be okay. No, that's not what I'm saying. So what I'm saying. What I'm saying is every people have to learn. A lot of people have to learn the history of why it's so offensive. Like, just like you said, a child that's growing up, they don't know what's wrong for stealing until you teach them. They had to learn that stealing is wrong. So a lot of those people have had to learn that that word can be offensive. Now, me personally, no, I'm not going to pull them to the side. They just singing a song. But you can also tell the difference in between someone that feel like they're good enough to be your friend and someone that's actually using that word to be wrong. But then back to something y'all said, as far as we as people accepting that word. I'm like, Daniel, I have had to, and I'm still doing it because I catch myself calling my cousin that when he act crazy sometimes. But <laughs> I I have to, I have had to train myself and stuff not to say that because I have begun to feel like if anybody can't use that word with me, I shouldn't use it because why would we want to adopt something that was meant for our harm anyway? So it's just, i that's the only reason why I wouldn't pull them aside is they just performing. Like, it's just karaoke. It ain't like they got up there and got the mic, song ain't on, nothing ain't happening, and they just get up there and start talking like it. They were singing, they're singing a whole song. 
Can I cut you off so, real quick? Just real quick. Just off of what you said. I'm sorry. The only thing that the only thing that would bother me about that is about what you're saying is you give somebody an inch, they'll take a mile. And that's the only thing that I won't tolerate. Because well, how I feel about that is yes, they're just performing, but in it's 2021. Let's just be honest. Everybody, besides toddlers, of course, everybody know what that no, word is. Yeah. So if you're if you're performing a song, I feel like in the back of their head, like I'm gonna see what they say. And then I'm gonna sing it. And if they don't say none, all right, well, at the water cooler the next day, yeah, what's up, man? Where it's like not saying that they would do that. Not saying that they would do that, but some people would. Some people would see how far they can go with us and then just get comfortable. You get what I'm saying? And Not to cut you off. I just wanted to do that to, with each other. Like I told, I said, like I said, I was surprised that people were so comfortable saying that word. But like I said, with the story that I gave she still noticed my reaction to that word and she has yeah. not said it in front of me again. Yeah. Okay, so she respected, you, was... she respected you on that. But, but that's, that's what the thing. She didn't, was, if she wasn't aware that that was an offensive word, she, she, would have act, she wouldn't have reacted to that. Or let's just say not that really. Courtney, let's just say that Courtney never made a face. Let's say that Courtney thought about the disrespect and, ki- and kept a poker face. She's, a, she's paying attention to that. Exactly. And now like, it's like, okay, I said it once. I could say it again. Exactly. But I get, I get, I get what Keith is saying though. Keith is saying, that we, if we're going by Daniel's logic, then that means we need to pull him to the side. Now I don't know. I'm a beat you up type shit. Like we my just need to say, right. hey, that's not right. Yeah, because yeah. like, like what she said is just it's all about the person. And I and I was just saying as far as with me, that's why I said I didn't mean to cut you off. As far as with me, I'm just not gonna tolerate that because. That's just, it makes me feel a certain way. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and there's nothing wrong for it. you. I'm not saying you're wrong for not wanting to pull them to the side. That's not the reason why I stepped in and, and said what I want to say. I just feel like sometimes mm-hmm. what we allow will continue. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's kind of like domestic I, violence. It's kind of like, it's kind of like you, you have a child and she steals. I think one of y'all uh, Courtney. brought that up. Courtney. Uh, Courtney brought it up and she steals and she knows she's not supposed to steal, but mama sees her steal. Don't say nothing. So guess what? She gonna steal what again. Doing. You know what I'm saying? And, and she, that's why that's that's why I said that I can only control that word around me. So me, I was right. I would bring them aside and say, listen, you listen to that, you want to sing the song in your car with your other friends, that's fine. Don't say it around me because it makes me feel some type of way. Right. I can't talk for the next black person beside me. Yeah. Right. That's the only I mean, reason why goes, I said that. I didn't mean to cut goes, you off, but that's the only reason why I said that. And that goes for all of us. That's how I mean that's how it's gonna be. No, I don't. I I do take offense to those that do try to use that word yeah. the original way it started. Mm. I do take offense to that. That's why I can't watch Roots because I get I get I I get angry. I ain't gonna lie. I get angry. I don't go out here fighting, but I do get angry. <laughs> I and, and and it upsets me and it hurts me so bad. But I also look at it in a manner of when y'all were saying about doing away with the word. We are, I know some people ain't gonna like it, some people ain't gonna care, but I feel like we all should do away with the word because it's it doesn't matter in our net net I can't get the word out now, but ethnicity. Ethnicity. and in other yeah. we it's like people like how we treat each other. So you got people that kind of feel like, well, they treating each other like that. Then you know what I'm. I must. I could. I could be able to do it too, and stuff. And that. And that goes in families. Like if you look at certain families, when they see how a mother is treating a child, you will have other people on the outside. Well, no, mama don't care. So I don't have to. Care, I don't have to care too. So my thing is one. I feel like we shouldn't even be trying to adopt that word to try to make something positive out of it when it was already created to be negative. It was already created to down us. And this has been some, this something that has been happening for years. Like in the Bible, we're turning, us turning against each other. And when I was in a class, they showed a video and that, and the leader of the KKK, he specifically has said himself, he said, they sitting up here worrying about us, telling us we killing the black man. No, we're not. They're doing our job for us. Oh yeah. Yeah. They always say that. Mm. That's so, he, is, he is going into the BL, the Black Lives Matter, Black Black Lives Matter movement, you know, because 
you know, people, that's a whole nother right. topic we can kind of talk about where they say just briefly, they just be like, why y'all so worried about white officers gunning down black people when y'all gun down each other? Y'all ain't not they marching people protesting. People are gunning down people in every single race. That's not a real argument. I don't I don't think that's an argument for that. But well, well, I'm, gonna, a whole, I'm, I'm gonna say it. this right. I'm going to say this right here. Um, with listening to all of y'all, and especially what Keister was saying and um, Daniel was saying, y'all just made me realize something. I wrote, I wrote it down a little bit. Well, it's up here. All right. You made me think that uh, the N-word is like pork. And I think Whitney can chime in on this because she's... Oh, well, Whitney and uh, Courtney, y'all are healthy. Uh, the N-word <laughs> is like pork. And what I mean by it's like pork is you know, back in the day of uh, slavery, like where the chitlins and the hog mouths and the pig feed and all the other stuff, that was the scraps, you know, but black people took what was bad and what was left over and they turned it into made it something that tastes good. So that's what I'm thinking. Like y'all got me thinking now, like it's the N word, like the scraps, like the pork meats and stuff. Like we know it ain't good for us. We know we don't need it, but yet we still eat it and we season it and flavor it and make it taste good. So do away with the pork, do away with the N-word. You take the pork out your life, you feel better, you look better, you, you think better, you know? So maybe we should just take the N-word out the vocabulary whatsoever. Cause like he was yeah. saying, it was done. It was, it was created for something negative and harmful. And just because we got it and then flipping it, it's still, a, it don't matter how the way you fucking flip it. Yeah. It, it's that's just, why i was saying like at some point you will have to decide if you're going to be okay with it all the way around or you're not going to accept it because you weren't running into those sticky situations oh somebody get to say it. i don't get to say it why can y'all say it i can't say it. like you run into that and i don't know i mean i know all of y'all follow me on social media but that's just like you know recently i had posted a status about using the word ghetto, ghetto you yeah, know I and i just it. yeah i just i just you know i was watching something and they had said something was ghetto and it just it just reminded me and made me think of because I'm like, you know, I like when something is just like when somebody is being real rude or they just being loud or whatever, I'm quick to say, well, not quick to say, but I'll sometimes will make a reference just to be like, oh, they so ghetto, they so this and so that. And I just realized that it's a, a lot of words in our vocabulary that we need to uh, really think about how we're using them and why we're using them. And we do need to unlearn or, or remove some of those words from our vocabulary because I feel like certain words like that, they carry negative connotations. And as long as we continue, like you mentioned, Ashley, as long as we continue to use these words and continue to say them, they're just gonna be accepted. So I just feel like, you know, I, me personally, I'm trying to make a personal effort to think about the words that I use in my vocabulary to really understand like what is what am I really trying to say when I say this word like what are you really saying just like if somebody was around me that's white and they said nigga like especially if it's I'm gonna be like what you why why would you say that like what why do you why would you describe something or him like that or whatever the case may be like what is the root of why you want to use this word so bad like what makes something ghetto and you know you'll start to figure out like you're attaching certain traits certain characteristics and certain verbs to this word and you don't even realize it so i think uh the n word is one the b word ghetto ratchet um a lot of other things that are just in our normal vocabulary and you know we might not even realize how much like negativity we still attach to ourselves as a community and so until we get that off ourselves like no we're not this we're not that even what daniel was saying about the whole using a kid or whoever had like the monkey on them you know, oh, that was me. The um, monkey, cool yeah, oh, yeah, the yeah. You know, I'm just like mixed up about something like that because it's just like at some point, we're gonna. Ha I feel like at some point, it's just like I really don't get offended by like I didn't get offended by that because the monkey, he's an animal, kids like monkeys, they like other things in the jungle, they like this and they like that. But I don't think as a community, we will ever get to the point where we can really just be free with certain things like that. Like we're never gonna be okay with any monkey reference. Not, not saying that we should be okay if somebody call us a monkey, but I am saying that you should be able to enjoy certain things without, you should be able reaching. to enjoy certain things. Yeah, like without reaching like, if my kid likes monkeys or if they like going to the jungle, they like the zoo, I don't think we should automatically get offended because they 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 do something like that. You know, so I just feel like it's a lot of a lot of unlearning that we have to do, a lot of relearning 
um, that has to take place in our community for us to get to a place. And, and people have to realize that we have to treat our community differently in the sense of it's a lot of layers to peel back and there's going to have to be a lot more patience because it's so many things that's embedded in that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, it's, hard. it's a lot. Can I ask you a question though? You know, so I just feel like we just, we just really had to, that's why I, go Courtney. I was going to say, I just want to know, are you saying that we need to change our verbiage on how we describe things and all that stuff like that for the benefit of the other races picking that up and using those connotations for it? Or are you no, saying that no, I'm saying that we should, yeah, for our own, because I feel like even when we use the word or whatever word we use, we use it in a negative way. So I feel like we should change our vocabulary based on what we feel like we're saying. So if you're, if, if you, to me, it's just like, I don't, I don't, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying we should change what, how our vocabulary based on what they feel. I'm saying change it based on how we are saying it and what it means to us. Like to us, you know, we're saying something is ghetto, like we're attaching, like it's low class, it's cheap, it's this, it's that, and that, and that. Like if if we're constantly putting so many negative vocabulary and words to communicate with each other in our community, it's like that's going to continue to stay there, not for based on another race or whatever. I'm just talking about for our community to, to be empowered or to feel like you know, like there are certain negative things about the ghetto. Like, like I mentioned in my post, like the people in the ghetto didn't act to be in the ghetto. In the ghetto, those are situations that create that were created out of their control. So it's like if they didn't couldn't help, they didn't have resources or different things like that. So why continue to have this group of people labeled that way? So when you say some like people really still live in the ghetto. So like when you keep saying, oh, that's ghetto, that's ghetto, like that's that's offensive to people in our community. That's what I'm saying. Like you're saying words that's hurting your own community that they actually take offense to from you as a black person. So that's that's kind of like where I mean. I, I just wanted to make it clear because um, I think because like Daniel was saying, like we can't have anything. I thought like you were trying to trying to say that we should do that because you know because you know how less white people love is still black culture. So you yeah. know how they like to pick up she things and that's how they use those words. Cause like we <laughs> might be like, oh, that's ratchet. And then, you know, now everybody's saying like, this is ratchet to describe right, something. Right, right. Like, and ratchet. period. And so I thought you were saying like <laughs> to stop that from being, you know, the thing. But if, if it's for our own- But I, I mean, it is, it is a percentage of that. And that's why I say that we also have to understand like, just because of our history and where we come from, I feel like there's so, it's, it's like, one way then there's a counter way like it's something to counter everything that we do so it's like, like yeah mostly what i'm saying is because i want us to not have a negative image of ourselves within our own community but another part is it is like i feel like because certain things is so widespread and so widely used like they always just gonna take what we do and run with it like i, I know that's something that we can't control I just don't want, I just don't want us to be the ones hurting our own selves or us offending our own. We still right. talking about the N-word, right? As far as not using it for each other. Is that what you're saying, Whitney? I'm sorry, I stepped to the bathroom. Oh, okay, no, I, I, I was kind of away from that word. I was just talking about like ghetto and ratchet and stuff. Oh, okay. I'm all for like, you know, choosing better verbiage to, for the benefit of ourselves. I guess I'm just kind of, it, it, it's like I'm torn with that because it just it irritates me that we have to like change. part of that percentage would be for because white white yeah. or non-black people choose to pick up that culture and use that verbiage to how they think that we're describing you know what i mean like yeah just, i see that's where i'm at that's exactly where i'm at like, but i'm yeah. off i, I like, don't want to have to change for you right you know exactly I'm that's 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 what i'm yeah. trying to say i just that ear yeah. to the bone but for our so, own the, thing, the, I, so I, are y'all like the, the it, it's like the members only club like black people only is that like the N-word? Yeah, like, that's what it I is. I mean, like, like never, honestly, I'm that's just what that. it is. Like, that's the code word. That's the key word for us. We took something that you meant to... My thing is, you can't... You gave us this word for negative connotation. To belittle us, to put us down, to make us feel less than. Okay? We took this word, like, like, like she said, Cube said, flipped it, and turned it into something to be borderline empowerment and things of that nature. That Just because we take that word and make it positive don't mean you get to say it in a positive manner when your people are the ones who meant it for our negative men. You get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? 
It makes sense to me. It just like it ain't got nothing to do with y'all. Like that's just how I'm looking at the world. Right. Like that is none of y'all. Like, why y'all want to do everything we do? Like I, exactly. I, I'm flat. Kiki, Kiki, what was you? Kiki, what was you saying? So we can wrap this up because it's about to be ten thirty. No, oh, sorry, well, well what I was just saying real quick, as far as like all what they were saying and stuff, um, as far as the cleaning up for ourselves, one, it does have to start at home. Uh, Michelle in it a little bit. Uh, the, the, it says to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. And then to do unto others as you have them do unto you. Love them like you love yourself. So love them like you love yourself is the same, that it's like standards. If you know that you're not going to take a man disrespecting you if you're not going to take a man doing this and doing that you know your self-worth you know what you accept hearing you know what you accept doing you know what you do and all that stuff so it's like in in our community or like you said our member uh, members club only i mean you know club members only right. or whatever the case may be if we know what we're going to accept and how we're going to feel we at first got to clean up ourselves so we'll know what we're going to accept and what we're not going to accept from others so as is looking on it as a basis because it was and the attentions of like you cannot erase the the creation of it because of the creation of it if you you can try to clean it up if you want to but it's still there because that is how that's the foundation of it but you have to first like uh, what Whitney said you first have to do it for you you have to do it for you because other people treat you how for some reason i don't know why but they will treat you according to how or what you accept so a, a lot of them do accept feel like well y'all all right disrespecting each other or disrespecting yourself so what i know well, we got to well, well, wrap up but can i ask one question with that can i ask one question? i know we got to wrap up this this yeah. question but the only question that i have for you kista is I give you a scenario. Would this be would this be the same thing for you know everybody? Our family has a nickname for us. Okay, right. our family has a nickname for us. My friends have a nickname for me. Okay, yeah, when I have, went to college, every black person got two nicknames. Right, their family so my, nickname and their, and their friends' name. name. So my friends, my friends had a nickname for me in college uh, that I told them they can call me. My closest friends would call me Pork Chop. Okay. If you don't know, there's there's people on that campus that didn't know me. I did not allow them to call me pork chop or any variation of that word. Okay. And until you get to know me, I am Daniel. Okay. So is, is that not the same thing? Is that not the same thing if okay, if I call, if I call Ashley my my N-word, like hey, that's 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 my N-word, and she's okay with that. Because she she's okay with the word, it still it, it still borderlines on the same thing as me. Is, am I making sense? Like, well, because I don't want Keisha to answer this because I know what she go, it's gonna take a long time. Basically, <laughs> what basically what Keisha is saying is, hell no, y'all, no, it's negative. Get away with okay. it. And I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna do this right here. I'm a another thing that popped up in my head as y'all was talking. You know how uh, They've done away with the Confederate flag and the statues and stuff like that. And black people was like, yay, tear it down. Mm -hmm. I think that's what she's saying with the N word. Oh, okay. Like we know where it I comes from. She, so I if see you, what you're saying. You, you taught, yeah. We in South Carolina, okay. you tired of the white boys with the dirty pickup trucks with the fucking Confederate flag waving it. You know, are you see the license plates with the Confederate flag? Are you seeing with the hat to make it like you don't like that? So Back away from the N word. That's what she said. And I get what you I, listen. Court, listen Courtney and Daniel ain't having that. No, listen. There's gonna be people that's watching this that's gonna say we're too educated. First off, we don't know what we're talking about. Four hundred years of slavery compared to how long was that war? <laughs> I said you well, compared four hundred years of slavery. To three years. Three years. That's what I'm saying. Like you can't. Those you can't compare those two. But then, well, I get I, your point if though. You wanna, if you I get your point. I'm I understand what she's saying. I understand what she's saying. Right. And, you know, I, I'm, if, you know, if there was a collective agreement and people were like, we should end it, da, 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 I don't say the word a lot. So I'm all for it. Like, right, I, right. right. Yeah, I'm just right. saying, like, well, I do. I say thing, a lot. you can't compare 400 slaveries to a three to four year war. Okay. Well, it, that, well, people are going to watch this and play devil's advocate with your math equation. Then they would say, 
Why would you want to do something that was dragged out for 400 years? You should be focusing more on that work, eradicating that work versus the freaking flag that was around for the three-year war. I mean, you understand? Point, point you see what made. I'm saying? Point no. <laughs> okay, okay, Courtney, that's what I get. You're coming at it about like the whole fact of we you we have something, we took it to try to make it positive, like court. Okay, are you gonna make are you gonna eat court tonight? Can you make a, a BLT? Are you gonna eat it? No. All right, just start using the word. All right, next topic. Uh, <laughs> cork is nigga. Cork is the N-word. All oh, right, I'm like, so wait, what? I'm confused. Look, <laughs> <laughs> no, she said that to get Courtney to shut up. She just shut up. I was about to say that. Shut it in there. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense, so you couldn't come back with nothing. When you re- when you rewatch the footage, you'll understand, because I said about the pork, it, the N-word is like pork. Black people don't. We took it scraps. It was negative. It's bad for your health, but yet we oh, still okay. eat it. We season it with food. <laughs> I get That's it. what I need. That's what I need. I, I, was, I was so Brittany, confused. You gotta go back and watch the video. You gotta go back and watch it. Okay, Brittany, I was. I'm on the show and I was confused. I was like, <laughs> what? I'm, okay, real quick. Basically, earlier about 10, 15 minutes ago, I said I think the N word is like pork, which is. Back in the day, in the slavery days, the white people ate the good stuff. Black people were left with scraps. Hence, the hog nose, the pig feet, the pig ears, the pigtails, the uh, chitlins. You know, they took that nasty, disgusting stuff. Like, some black people don't eat that now. You know, because it's, it's horrible. It's horrible for your insides, your body, and it just stinks, you know. But what black people have done was taken it and seasoned it and cooked it and made it seem like something, uh, made it taste better. But just because it tastes better, you put a little bit of barbecue sauce on it and it seasons this out or whatever, it's still bad for your insides. It's still going to raise your blood pressure up, you know? So some people, Whitney and uh, Courtney, they don't deal with that stuff. You know, they have a, 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 a better diet, you know? And so I asked Courtney, are you going to make a BLT, a bacon, lettuce, tomato? And she said confidently, firmly, hell to the no. <laughs> so I said, stop using the N-word. Look at it like that, you know? All right, let's move to the um the last one, which is uh this is a more lighthearted one or whatever. Um, which is more important to you? Good sex or financial stability? So you want a, a man or a woman that has good loving or a good paycheck. You can't have both. So which is important for you? I'll go first. Go ahead. The the financial stability, I would go with that first because I can teach you the good love. You're preaching, ma'am. That was gonna be my answer, but go ahead. Like, cause, 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 what I see, I see it as just like I told somebody the night when they was uh, talking to me and getting advice about it. I don't care how it go, you both got to learn each other when it comes to the loving part and having sex part because what worked for that last person don't mean it's gonna work what for this. Work for you. So I feel like somebody can say the same thing for the reverse though. What do you mean? Yeah, I was I was gonna say like somebody could say the same thing like uh Keith is saying as far as picking financial financial stability stability first over over good sex. Someone could actually say the same thing, like you know, financial. I mean, because I feel like when you say financial stability, I feel like when you're talking to certain people, that's gonna mean certain things to me. Like overall, you know, being able to, you know have funds and not have to worry about things and not pinching pennies but i feel like to some angle financial stability looks different to different people so like when you're saying to me you're picking or or you're given the option of good sex over financial stability what does that financial stability look like like are you just saying you you have a job and you're able to pay your bills and you know you're okay until your next paycheck comes. Like, what does that look like? Because I mean, that, I feel like that's standard. Like, I feel like, you know, unless you like just date in any old body. Like, I mean, if you're taking care of yourself, then to some people that may be financially stable. Like, I ain't worried. I ain't got a big, you know, I ain't got a whole sum of money. But you know, I can pay my bills. I can go out to dinner every now and then. So I'm stable. So, you know, or they can feel like the reverse, like I was saying, you know, if it's somebody who's very sexually active and they have a high sex tolerance, like that may be a top thing for them. They may be like, okay, well, you got to have the good stuff first. 
you know, and if you if you already at that level where you have a job, you can pay your bills. Like I can teach you how to be how to manage your money more and how to get more of it. So that's my thing. Like when people give that little choice, it's just like how much financial stability are you talking? But I still feel right. like you can you can teach somebody how to love on you too. Like yeah. that's that's and that's why I totally agree with what Keisha was saying because for me is you know it is it's if I don't I need to learn you. You know what I'm saying? Especially, and if, if I'm, this is say I'm financially stable, right? Mm-hmm. And I got the money together, things of that nature. Like, normally it's because I'm a busy person. I work hard. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have the mental capacity to just know it all. Especially when it comes to learning somebody else of the opposite sex that I'm trying to spend my life with. So, yeah, you got to show me what makes you kick. You got to, and what I necessarily show me, but you got to, like, if there's something that don't work for you, I wouldn't just, like, write you off. If you're doing something for me and it just don't work for me because you did it for your last boyfriend, like, I'm going to let you know, like, no, this is how I like to be touched. This is how I like to be sucked. This is how I like, to be, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you got to learn each other regardless. So I totally agree with, uh, with Keisha. You got to learn each other. This is a PG. Don't be using that S word up here. This is a. a, a <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. It, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. It. <laughs> oh, I'm not sorry. I didn't, but you get like, I. It's just what it is, though. Like I feel like, I for me. But I no, would not have, not. I, well, yeah. I feel like I, I guess. I guess have, I'm. I'm just probably playing a little bit of devil's advocate for. Oh no, no. Like, but I agree with you. Because, because, no, I agree because, with what like, you said. I definitely. Because like it's that's that's still a difference though. Like you're saying, learn the person sexually. When you're with somebody, that's something you're. I would hope that you're exactly. doing exactly. automatically is learning a person sexually and what they desire, what their likes are, different things like that. But we're saying like bad at sex, like not learning you and what you like and the things you don't like. They're just bad at sex. They don't know how but to, to do it. They people, just get fumble. They're just over the place. I, to a lot of people, to a lot of people, people feel like if if they don't do something that makes you tick, that you're bad at sex. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that that is a thing. That's a literal thing. Like there's a that's lot a of thing. people, there's a lot of people that you know what I'm saying literally like they'll have they'll they'll have the 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 intercourse for the first time and then be like oh that was horrible i ain't never talking to him again when like you never you don't it could have just been the fact that they don't know what makes what buttons to push like literally well this is what made me come up with the question because i was watching this tv show because i know i'll be up at like three four o'clock in the morning and i was like oh yeah this is a good question somebody dropped but go ahead ashley (laughs) It was a um, it was a TV show, and uh, well, the guy her 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 boyfriend was a doctor, not no going to school. He's already in it, financially stable. He's fit, he's handsome, he's black, and uh, he got a shit together. But he sucked balls in the bedroom. She could not. She was just like it was literally. She was having like an out of body experience. Like she was like he would be behind her. And she would be like this right here. And she'd be talking to the, t- the camera. It'd be like, so he's really think he's doing something. I don't know how long I can do this. I'll put up with this. I don't know. Okay, well, I can see he's almost finished. Ugh, ugh. Uh, like, I was like, <laughs> like, we do have to do that. Like, sometimes, but you, cause you're like, I, I, I don't, he's not sexually pleased me or she's not. I don't think men have to deal with this, but women are more like, he's not sexually pleasing me. I'm not sexually fulfilled or satisfied, but I don't want to just leave because of sex when he got everything else going, you know? Um, and it just made me think, I was like, and he asked her to marry him and, but she got a side dude. Like she had a side dude, so. Yeah, yeah but Another you got to think Andrew. about it as well, though. You got to think about it as well. With it being like that, if he wasn't a doctor and didn't have that financial stability and she was getting what she get, would it would even would it have even gotten that far for her to find out if he was good or not? Ooh. Wait, okay. say that again. So it's a good question. Say that again, kids. Okay, so the thing is, being like according to what Ashley just described, what she was watching, the thing is, if he mm-hmm. wasn't a doctor and he didn't have the money and all this stuff he had. And she couldn't get the things she was getting. Would it have gotten that far for her to even find out if he was even good or not? For the simple mm-hmm. fact of, 
if it's that important about the good loving, she would have left regardless of who what he had, how he had. But she stayed and got a whole side nigga. So she wanted those finances before she wanted that good love. Mm. I'll tell you this right here. I haven't finished it because after this right here, I'm going to watch the middle of it. <laughs> but um, matter of fact, I'll tell y'all the show um, if y'all care to watch it so y'all can be up to date. But um, but one of the things when she would go visit her side dude, even after she accepted the guy proposal, because she she wasn't re- going based off what you said, Kiki, uh, she wasn't real she's not happy in it, you know, because when he asked her, when he proposed to her, she was like, uh, let me think about it. He was like, what? Like, he's what, he's like a Oreo type of guy. Like, he's black, but he's like, you know, mm-hmm. you know, but, um, and so he was like, yeah. that's not what you're supposed to do. He was like, where's jumping for joy? Where's the, oh my God, I'm crying. He's like, I thought you guys, you women love that. You know, she was like, just let me think about it. And so what what happened was she ended up getting a side. Well, he he left for some surgery or whatever. And then she talked to her girls about it. And then of course you got once a couple girls that's like, uh, he's a cornball. I don't even know why you went with him anyway. Then the other one was like, girl, you better go ahead and say yes. You ain't got to, you won't be a housewife. You ain't got to worry about nothing ever again. Then she had a cousin that was like, um, do what makes you feel Look happy. At <laughs> Do what do what makes you feel happy. I was laughing at Keith's face. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, do what makes you feel happy. And then um, and then they went out, and then that's how she ended up. A guy was like, Yo, can I dance with you? And she was like, No, no, no. She was real respectful about her relationship. She's like, No, 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 I don't wanna. And then one of the friends was like, Girl, you want a break? You can dance, it's just a dance. And they say, you know, that's how she ended up with her side, dude, you know. And of course, it was he was met. No offense. Uh, I know this girl talked, Daniel, but mandingo you know um so she was like she had another out of body experience she's like how come the guys with the good dick that's tall dark and handsome don't have their shit together you know <laughs> and so she was just like and so but see my thing is i feel like go ahead ashley that's how she ended up accepting the guy's proposal because she was like he's supportive of me um he'll be a great husband a great father he loves me she's like but the sex is just like and he also because the same way she was um talking to her girls he was actually going to the hospital and talking to his uh female like nurse whoever helped him in the delivery room and all the other stuff um and they was just like yo you need some help in the bedroom so the women talked to him about it at his job and uh because he was like they said well what does she do after y'all have sex and he was like oh she watches tv and they would they just bust out laughing it's like so she doesn't go to sleep he was like no she just watches tv or plays on the phone and they was they bust out laughing so that's when he took her to a sex store so he did try you know but she you know i, I can't wait to watch see what's, yeah. what's happening next but but yeah but she accepted his i was just gonna I was just going to say, like, overall, I feel like financial stability will always take the crown because there's so many things that comes with that. You know, I mean, good sex is just one thing. So I feel like financial stability will always take the crown if you're picking between the two. But I will say that I I'm not, I won't necessarily don't like I hate how a lot of times people downplay attraction and sex and things in relationships like they'll Very say like for, like for a low level example like you'll they'll like you have two people or you have a friend they're like oh i saw this I, I know i have this great guy for you he got this he got this going for himself really great guy whatever whatever and she let me set you up on a date so they said the friend sets them up on a date and she sees the person and she is not physically attracted to him they go out on another date she doesn't feel no attraction to him. Like she can't see herself being intimate with him or anything like that. And she goes back and tell her friend, like, oh, you know, this guy is great, but you know, I don't really find him attractive. And you know, people will be like, girl, he he has a great personality. He got this and he got that. But I feel like when you are with somebody, you can't like physical attraction is what you first see when you meet somebody if you don't know anything about them the first thing that you're meeting is their appearance it's gotta be so i feel like yeah like their appearance so i feel like you know i don't think people should downplay when some like physical attraction to somebody having chemistry or uh your um what's the word i'm looking for sexually attracted to that person or you know you can see yourself being intimate with them i feel like that are those are still important things in a relationship and then you know i feel like sometimes people ignore those things and then they get in these relationships you know 
long term, they get married and all of that, and the person does not sexually satisfy them, and then they start cheating or they start doing whatever, 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 or you know they really wasn't attracted to the person, and the person feels like they can feel that the person is not attracted to them, so they the other person may start to have low self low self esteem or confidence or things like that. So I just want people to be you know, welcome, like, you know, don't shy away from, like, if you're not uh, physically attracted to the person, not saying that you should just automatically write them off, but that is something that you should kind of be checking the box on, like, are you uh, attracted to them, do you have a chemistry with them, not just, okay, this person has this, and this person has that, so we're good, like, no, are you really attracted to them, like, do you feel the connection, is the love there, like, those are things to be uh, conscious of as well. Mm-hmm. We're gonna talk, one of the topics we're going to talk about probably next week is blind dates because that because Whitney just like I think you should your friends should know who you are so they should look for certain qualities not just uh the getting married qualities but also is my homegirl gonna want to fuck him qualities you know <laughs> blind dates <laughs> so Courtney, I always leave it to Ashley <laughs> how do you feel about that topic like um what's important to you good loving or good finances I mean, like Whitney said, we're talking about the, the just the question itself, not getting into details about like, can I make this person better this way or that way? If we're talking about the question itself, I'm totally with Whitney. Financial stability is always going to trump that. I don't, I don't, that was a bad term to use, but it's always going to be above that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I don't, that's not a question. I'm always going to want financial stability over good sex. Granted, both would be fantastic however if i had to pick between two it's going to be financial stability and sometimes i don't feel like it's like a financial stability up here and good sex down here like a lot of times it's really like (laughs) oh like what like that should that should just come at an automatic pair like sometimes like you just want it to be like that's just a pair right that's how you want it instead of separated like it's not, it's not like, okay, well, oh yeah, I'm definitely choosing. It's like, no, nah, like you want good sex too. It's not too far down below financial stability. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, but, but typically it's the no, guy that's like, no, no car, uh, <laughs> uh, no car. Hey, they that. got the Excel at something. They ain't got nothing else going. They got the Excel. Exactly. Like, and and those are the ones that depend on that to get them what they want as well. Uh huh. Just like with money, the guys with money, they depend on that to get them what they want because they don't. Yep. They might ain't females, good luck, so all good they got is their money. Right. Absolutely. Yep. So just like females too, they feel like they just because they're they great in bed and they look good, mm-hmm. they feel like yeah. that should be enough for to get a, a baller. Listen, yeah, that's I true. Went, listen, I went to Lada uh, uh Saturday. Matter of fact, Courtney, uh, remember when we was on the phone in the grocery store? <laughs> yeah okay so after i got the phone to your stuff and i was going to check out so it was a woman and two kids and a guy and it was me well they clearly knew each other and then so they was talking you know how we talk in the store and so you know how black people always be you either do one or two things you either be like you're looking at somebody cart or either you'd be like oh i should have came a little bit early you could have bought my stuff or, or, or i'm gonna go home with you yeah. you don't work with all the good stuff you know we all know why we do that but we do that in the own um, girl stuff well, anyway, so the woman was like, you're going to buy my stuff. And so the man was like, well, what you going to give me? Now, this is all talk through the mask. We all got on masks, you know. And so he was like, what you going to give me? And she said, oh, baby, uh, you can't afford this. And so he was like, shit, that's why I don't deal with light-skinned women anyway, you know, because y'all always want to overcharge for something. Ooh. And it made me think. It made me think. I'm like, how much do she think she's worth? She's older. She had two kids. And she won't all the way that cute, you know, like, you know, like some run out the house real quick type of stuff, you know, you know, so I was like, <laughs> how much she thinks she's worth? And I was like, do we overvalue ourselves? Like, if he would have just bought her grocery and let it be that, like, she should have been thankful, but she would have been like, oh, no, let me go back. I, I, hate on being, it. I hate being behind people that be like, oh, let me run and go get this real quick. Or let me go get that. I'm like, holding up the damn line, you know. But uh, I, that just made me think, I'm like, what she mean by, oh, you're going to have to pay more than this? And I'm like, but you got two kids. Your hair ain't done. Your nails ain't done. Uh, but she that's right. why. She, because she wanted to get her hair done. You don't know what that 
to play devil's advocate, you don't know what that girl's head game like. You don't know right, right, or what she like. can do. That's probably where she put her value on. She probably said, yeah, exactly. I'm going to show you how exactly. I got oh, listen, listen, she said, she said, she, that was talking about some, oh no, he, he invited her to like a concert or something. I guess he's like a, a DJ or something. Like, I don't know. He gave me DJ vibes. And so she was like, oh, she said, uh-uh, y'all too old. Y'all play that old people music. She said, now, when you got some Megan Thee Stallion, uh, some body out of y'all, she said, then I'll come out there, you know? And I just started laughing. I was like, these old ass people. Like, that's so, that was so hilarious, but. But you got, you got a lot of people out here who are nickels looking for a dime. And that's true. All right, so yeah, let's wrap age. this up because it's almost like land then. All right, so basically, um, <laughs> so is Trump, is, I don't I don't want to use that word. So is <laughs> so is fine. So I, I'm thinking of I think everybody with Kiki and maybe Daniel. Uh I think us three went in court. We 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 want finances. We want you to be financially stable. And that's not on no gold digger type stuff. Cause I know men are gonna look at this and be like, figures, gold diggers, you know. But um, I'm a gold digger. Come on, somebody. Um, and I ain't got no football or no soccer, no. but anyway, um, but uh, they want they feel like uh, with sex, it can be teachable. Um, I don't know, but then again, like you say, finances could be teachable, you know, you learn how to budget. You know, I think you could probably get a guy or get money. Some yeah. people don't know how to get money. Like if you with somebody like you ain't really used to getting money or hustling or doing whatever, you get somebody that's about their business and own it. Like they gonna teach you some things. They gonna teach you how to, like how they. I should say necessarily teach you. Like they gonna motivate you to the point where you wanna get up and you wanna do more than what you've been doing. Mm. You know. So, yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily teaching them, but you know they gonna be motivation for you because you ain't gonna be around them sleeping in the bed until twelve o'clock and they done got up and they done did two or three, four things before you even yes. touch the floor. Listen, speaking of that, Whitney, um, like a couple guys, new a uh, couple guys that I used to converse with, um, they'll call me to be like one, two o'clock in the afternoon, and I they hear the grogginess in my voice, right? And they be like, "Damn, what you do?" And I'm like, "I'm like, why?" I say, "Cause I sound, you know, I, I tell people I'm self-employed or whatever." And uh, I'm like, "Why?" I said, "Start questioning me. What time I get up in the afternoon when I ask you to pay my bills? If I don't ask you to pay none of my bills." Then don't question why I'm getting up one, two o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> you know, but, uh, I hate that. You know? But yeah. we're going to wrap this up. Um, thank y'all. Um, uh, thank you, Lou, for coming on for the amount of time that you could. Um, once again, everybody go visit his uh, page, uh, Lou Clemens, and then um, the body movement. I'll post it um, in the description on the YouTube videos and then I also post it on the I've Noticed uh, Facebook page. But uh, peace out, you guys. Wait, hold on. We're going to stay on after this or no? Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye. Bye. Let me hit the stop recording. Please hit it this time. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let me hit the, hold on. Let me hit the stop recording and let me get off a line. Make sure we hit it this time.